And it looks like you're the first item on the agenda, ma'am. Do we have any questions for Miss <laughs> Valerie? <laughs> How does this work? We just... Yeah, so when there's a vacancy mm -hmm. and the person is new versus a reappointment, yep. then the select board is asked that the person who hang out with the planning commission once or twice, which she's done, okay. and then come to you for a last chance to say hi before you make a vote. Gotcha. So the vote will be the completion of the term ending in 2024. Four, yeah. So that's what the motion is, is to complete that term. And then it's a four year term with a year and a half, basically. Left. left. Okay. Yep. And you so graciously stepped up to the plate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you a little bit about myself, for those of you who don't know me. Um, so, my name is Valerie Belfort, and I'm a nurse, and I've lived in Hyde Park now 20, 24, 26 years, 26 years, Ebenezer, um, and I was born and raised in Marksville, so I've been in Walt County most of my life. Um, in the, I was in the last 10, well, pretty much 10 years. Um, my work, I've worked with the Department of Health for 24 years. And the last 10 years or so, my work focus has been around communities um, and working to some degree with municipalities around grants that are available for health related, um, healthy, what we call healthy community design. We've seen her in that class. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. 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 And, um, and three years I did sit on the Regional Planning Commission as a county rep. So that was a great opportunity to learn a lot about um, planning. <laughs> and uh, learned a lot from people like Seth Jensen. And um, so I think now I'm at a point in, in time in my career that I am sort of wanting to, on a, on a um, volunteer basis, if you will, give back. So I, I've joined the Guyana Valley Hall Committee because uh, I live very close to the Guyana Valley Hall. And I am um, committed to, um, you know, looking at the community's needs in terms of, of social engagement. Um, I was briefly looking at the existing town plan and seeing that the trend, the, the, um, the age group trending, if you will, of, of Hyde Park is, is aging. And just thinking about what is an age-friendly community? What is, what is it, what will it mean for Hyde Park um, residents to age in place and to be vibrant and to be healthy and to, you know, happy. So <laughs> that's what I hope to bring anyway. And I know the town planning, um, process will be up again for renewal. So um, I'd like to be uh, involved in the groundbreaking of some of that. That's I, think, I think it's great that you've been on the Regional Planning Commission because that gives you an interesting perspective of the, mm -hmm. you know, of the county and how we fit into that and why folks are doing it. So yeah. I, just, I think it's terrific. And anyone willing to help out our town <laughs> is always great. That's right. <laughs> so, just what we need is I'm, I'm we just a need a motion. Yeah. To approve Valerie for the. I'll make a motion. Okay. <laughs> All right. You make a motion. Go for it. Welcome aboard. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> well, we need to vote, but you can make a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion that Valerie gets accepted into the planning commission. Second. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome aboard. Yeah. Were you related to the Belcourt farm? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Andy and Martha, my aunt and uncle. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I might stick around just for a few minutes. Sure. But, um, You're most welcome. Okay. Now we have a town rep for regional solid waste. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. No, have we don't have it. We need a. We need it. Do you want to join the waste? No, no. <laughs> we can make a motion to to vote Valerie. Who's not here that we'd like to put on? Yeah. So Marilyn's. That would be Ryan. 
Right. <laughs> right. Yes. So, uh, they have started to email me the packages for the meetings and also the paper one. So if the board member wanted to be interim, you could do one of yourselves, or we can take an ad out and see what response we get from the general public, which has been zero for about six years. <coughs> so Marilyn has done, I think, at least two appointments. She hasn't run for office again the ballot because she wanted to see if anybody else would do it. Step up, yeah. And then she agreed after town meeting to be appointed. So she's been on for several years, almost yeah. five, six, seven years. I don't even know. Um, with that kind of a system of having a vacancy and having an April appointment of her because she's the only one that would respond to the ads. So we're sitting in the same position now, so it's September, October. Um, so what does that entail? Uh, these monthly meetings, I think most of the year they might skip one or two, and then approving their budget and any kind of uh, initiatives at the regional level, you know, compost facility, recycling stuff. Uh, Richmond had a, or Chinna County had a vote for um, an upgraded recycling facility, $22 million, so that was a bond of all the towns. So the town is really, the towns are the ones that fund secure the debt and then the users pay so you're managing that kind gotcha. of system where it's gotcha. almost like a water system or sewer system but it's wastewater it's waste materials and recycling and i, I don't know anything about their operation i know that they have uh, joyce majors has been involved for as long as i've been in hyde park so she has yeah, to be 12 that. 15 years at least for her so she's the one that's the one that coordinates and looks looks to yeah. me for a name for right. Hyde Park to be our town rep. Mm -hmm. I said I'd bring it up tonight and see what the direction is. And if it's one of you all, that's fine. If it's go out to you know front porch and see what happens by you know your first meeting in November, then people there might be somebody new in town that's all about solid waste. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So we haven't asked that for a while. Yeah. So so that <clears throat> put an ad, put an ad on front porch form. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's, a, <clears throat> it's an elected office, which is a little bit higher weight. It's almost like select board for the solid waste district. Oh, okay. Because they're always have to be elected by a spread ballot. They're in the same category. Um, we could take out a little tiny ad in the newspaper because of that, or just do the front porch form thing. And, and that seems to reach a lot of people. Yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah, look at that. We don't have any other yeah. social media. We don't have Facebook. Kim will share hers account once in a while, but again, the town could, I'm not saying they have time to do that, but if, you, if we had both of those, the yeah. Facebook and front porch, I'd say most people would get the notice. Send, if you want to send me the write up, and then I can just post it on my Facebook. And yeah, any, anything that has a lot of people, people connected to it, yeah. it goes like kind of wide. Yeah. It, you know, that, and then I don't know how many people would even sign up for a Facebook Hyde Park account, but I'm sure it'd be a few. Yeah. Uh, but without that, we have to rely on just sharing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this is, uh, I think this is the same thing. It's filling the term, so it's not the full. It's, a, it's only until town meeting day, actually. It's just, oh, right. But maybe until, if somebody gets into the next election, it's like okay. it's a safe way to try it and see if you True. Like it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we'll do that and see who okay. comes up. That the uh, bathroom drop stairs. <laughs> they're ordered, but they're not here yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. Our big topic of the evening. Did he help? No. Oh, maybe he did. <laughs> he may not know how to go up. I need to go up rail. I think so. I didn't. <clears throat> oh, I haven't signed all those, I don't think. Oh, that's right, Bob. Well, I was oh. going to see you Put them all down here and then you can get them all at the end there. I could have come get them. We lose him? <laughs> so the big topic the budget yeah, i handed out a little uh email about the budget plan or schedule and stuff which i think 
Yeah, you have one in front of you, right? You have the agenda and the handout for the budget. Okay, so not much exciting in there. <laughs> Mark and I were talking about costs, and he's been talking about you know other road foremen or the state. It's just there's nothing good in highway stuff, yeah. from plastic to steel to winter salt. Uh, the other the. I haven't heard of any department on their own coming with a big number except for highway. So the, the recreation and library, and they're still working on it, but we don't know what's going to happen with those. Yeah. But nobody's come to say, oh, yeah, we're going to, you know, Sheriff might have done that with right. patrol costs and other things. I missed it. I'm sorry. Can we repeat what was I missed? It? Not much. We're talking about the budget. Just the memo in the front memo of The memo that he put, sent us. Just talking about how the. We yeah. um, the big numbers. What are the big numbers? I guess is what we're starting to talk about. Brian and I in the other towns, we met with the sheriff and looked through things. And again, he's he's going to try to do his three percent. But one of the things that we were looking at and trying to help everybody and helping him as well is um, is trying to use some of our the towns use a little of their ARPA money because one of the things that's in that's obviously in his budget every year are cruisers and fitting up cruisers. And if and just to we do the percentage of ARPA money towards each towards a cruiser as you know as we are our like this regular budget is. And um, he was gonna get to us but it was I didn't read that sheet of paper. It wasn't gonna be a lot of ARPA money from each town to like be able to do two cruisers, which would be money that he could pull out of that we're going to the taxpayers with. Oh, yeah. We could do that for two years because when we have to have the ARPA money spent, so that would help keep him at his 3% for the two years, but also still have cruisers. <laughs> what kind of number? What kind of number? What kind of number? I, is I, I really, I can't remember. My brain's not wrapped around much of the stuff. But it, it, wasn't, it wasn't an astronomical number. We did it for one two cruisers. Is it two cruises a year or one each year? It, we were looking at one each year, but yeah. but committing to the we can do the two cruisers. Anyway, he was he was he was going to see and work with it, see if he could come up with a plan. So he'll be in his regular budget when he comes. Yes, in. yeah, and he'll again. It was it was folks from both towns, and we met. And he was going to come up with something in the long. Trying for three months. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's better than yeah. I thought he was going to. Yes. Yeah. Well, he well, it's still him subsidizing us tremendously, but um, one of the things they've gotten is um, it's interesting. Their, their health insurance has gone down because he's got a lot of young guys, so they aren't family plans. No. And several of the guys with families are getting their insurance through their spouse. Oh. So he's, you know, that's what can happen with yeah. that. And, you know, so he's, so his right now the insurance is- So we'll see a credit. <laughs> no, you won't see a credit. Oh. You'll see there's <laughs> less that we owe. <laughs> Good try. Yeah, nice try. Good try. <laughs> um, so anyway, he's, they're, they're working on it. Uh, yeah, so we do have, and this is true every year, the revenue projections and the budget are relatively flat every year, basically property tax related to the grand list growth. And we did have a, a pile of homes this year, more you know, 14 homes issued, wow. 22. Mm -hmm. Okay, two more months left. <coughs> there might be one house in the pipeline that I haven't seen yet. So maybe we'll get to 15, which is the most in 12 years. Wow. Wow. So that's good mm -hmm. as compared to zero, if we had zero growth, we had a couple of years way back. So if we can get back up into that one and a half or 2% number, that really does help absorb your 3% Absolutely. budget to 4% budget increase. I don't know where you're going to end up. Yeah, you know, obviously it's early, but so not a lot of room there. The, the compensating factor to any of that are really two things, which is the, how you use your ARPA funds, whether some things come off the budget mm -hmm. because they're planned, they're not budgeted yet, a capital expense, like talking about cruisers, or you've already done some partial funding for the fire trucks through ARPA. Okay. Uh, so those, those things do offset, obviously, the expense budget for the town. And 
have a, uh, the NSI fund balance, which I'm holding back talking about any of that to the audits are done, but though that could have some policy requirements for thinking possibly, uh, where you're going to be over the 20%. So that could, the 20% is your cap, mm -hmm. supposed to keep under that for the unassigned fund balance for your savings account. Yep. Which means you either have to do special projects with it or have some dedicated to tax rate reduction for next July. And I think we're on track to know those numbers by pretty well by the January time. Not, yep. can not, we, can not we put now. Can we those in the capital funds? Yeah, so like right, we, right. we have a, yeah. 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 yeah, so we've done a couple transfers, uh, the unassigned, and I'm thinking probably highway is going to need one if, if there's money there. We have um, a, a back, back, back to back purchases coming up, including a greater, which we're definitely right. probably won't have enough money for in the reserve unless it gets some yeah. help to reserve itself. That's the cleaning the library. So that's the that's the other those are the two things that were sort of out there that could help. Yeah. The ARPA can't be applied to debt service directly, but it can make a hole by paying for a new acquisition. Right. And then you back so backfill it with the debt that you have from taxes. Yeah. It's just kind of a weird thing going on. Sure. Playing with money. Yeah, how how it flows. Yeah. And of course uh, we'll get some recommendations from Dan. Yeah as well towards the, towards the end of the <coughs> season. We really want to get a handle on departments not having any surprises over the next couple months so that when you hit December, you're talking about the bigger issues, uh, wages, staffing, changes, and, and those capital reserve questions. So, the budget and staffing is something that we need to spend a little time on for administration because that's a, that budget we're talking about is a July 20, July 1, 23 budget and my role and how we deal with my position are hopefully going to be resolved by then. <laughs> so one way to resolve it is to work on it now through the end of this calendar year mm -hmm. so that we have a plan that's funded for July 1. Right now we're sort of in between so we do have resources but we don't have a definite plan yet. Yeah. Part of that's with my <coughs> decision making. So give you the date. <coughs> so that's for your partial retirement you're talking or retirement or whatever. Oh. Yeah. I like the schedule. And all, the and all the departments know this, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I talked to Amy, Amy a little bit today. She's going to work with her trustees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Send my committees what date they're in. <laughs> Make sure they know. Gotta be here. Yeah, you, the liaisons have a role too for the budget. Right. <laughs> Are you okay, Sarah? I need to get some water. Yeah, yeah I think you should. Sure. <laughs> I have some, but we share. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Does anyone have any changes or questions they'd like to make on this tentative schedule here? Especially if you Proposed, want to see, especially say. if you want to see somebody in particular that's not on the list. Um, oh, you better. Just <coughs> will go for it. 
Yeah, yeah usually we, we do kind of spread it out. Yeah. yeah. We don't Which makes of, it easier. Yeah. yeah. You know, Amy's got meetings in October to determine the library budget, and she said November works great for her. But she goes, if we go sideways, can we come in December? I'm like, yes. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty flexible. I don't like going past Christmas time yeah. without at least a good handle on the budget and maybe a preliminary tax rate yeah. projection, because that starts to make, you know, your brain start to work on the harder questions if you have them. Yeah. You know, that we don't have a public service cut issue uh, primarily because you have unassigned and ARPA money to help right a lot of towns don't have unassigned and, and in two or three years they're not going to have ARPA in some places if inflation keeps going you're going to have to <coughs> talk you might have to talk about service cuts yeah. which I don't see us ever doing I just, I just think people I want what are you going to well, the basic services you're providing now are pretty yeah. basic. Yeah. So right. if you start to cut them, you're going to end up with impacts that people are saying, fund them anyway. Yeah. So you kind of have to keep a pulse of that if you see. Yeah. You know, when Johnson cut $30,000 on highway, there was more of a reaction to not getting information than it was. Money. You know what I mean? It was more like a communication thing. So as long as you're hearing what people are saying and you're presenting the information up to people over the next three months, that you're trying and you get these goals of three percent tax rate increase or whatever yeah. and you're just doing what you got to be doing right um you do sound like a school board at some point which is you know 90 percent of it's mandated and the yeah. rest of it you want to cut pencils exactly you know so you, you people don't really want you to plow the roads four out of seven days exactly yeah, yeah. 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 yeah no that's fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and some of the savings that you could have uh, on a lot of these programs <laughs> really, uh, John Savage. Minor in right. scope of a, this is the one that's mostly a church. Big budget. <coughs> you couldn't really get enough savings without causing some right. problems. So yeah, you really yeah. have to change yeah. things. The sheriff's department, I always thought there was room, and that's really a public, um, a public service question of Rogers advocate for 24 7. He wants two people in a cruiser at the nighttime, those kind of things, which are expensive. Well, they're expensive, but he can't get people to. Work for them if they don't do two in a cruiser, so they yeah. don't have no coverage. So, they, <laughs> so do they go no coverage at night? All oh, right. You know, or, or do the state police? They're off two to six every night, and they go out by call. And Roger never liked that concept. He he always advocated. Well, it's hard to get the state police to do it too. And he always advocated for having somebody on staff at night. Just having them at home ready to go doesn't really give anybody any benefits. Yeah. Because the person's already ready to go is just waiting at home. But anyway, that's a whole other. That was a whole, that's the only area I could ever think of cutting, and then that just. And mostly, the public is asking for more. You know, when they come in, it's they want more. Yeah. They want more time seeing people on the roads. They want more. You know, it's like okay, you can't. <laughs> yeah. So it, within the town office, I think the two, the two full time front office and then the two back office, which is Jennifer and I, are are not full are not full time in the sense of doing everything that needs to be done. I don't know what you're, you know that you've applied 40 hours and you've applied 32 hours to Jennifer, 40 to me. That's not enough hours to do things that should be done, so to speak. So yes. it's like two and a half, maybe, right? Is actually yeah. I mean, so we've kind of already cut there. Well, I've noticed it just just recently while I'm trying to think of what the town needs. So I was like, what does the town really need? So you start to look at what you're doing every day, and the town really needs what you all see as a need, right? What the public needs, what statute requires, what grants require. You know, there's lots of needs out there that have to be met. Some of the things that aren't getting done could be done with some good focus. So we've tried to do that, and we're doing that now with the finance manager, where Jennifer has taken off her primary duties, the payroll and AP, and we've told focus on that. Just because the old finance director had twice as much on the job duty list, because it was just overloaded a little bit yeah. when you look at the job description. So 
having her know that she can make progress through her different tasks and get them down really well and be as efficient as she can and then take a little bit more is helping her be really good at what she's been doing. Oh, perfect. That so, is a good plan. So yeah. the reverse of that. I'm that she's probably a lot more educated than the last person we had. For the finance piece, yeah. So she was able to take that in. But even there, there's still more that she, her skills could do, but we're not doing that yet. Yeah. You know, I, I t told you yesterday, I said, I think, you know, with the government cycle of a year long, you have quarterly deadlines, you have annual deadlines, you have uh, things that happen in the middle, <laughs> you know, like a huge problem and some benefit program that goes back 18 months, you yeah. know, it takes up a lot of time. Or sometimes even a request from the select board, you may not realize it's a simple request and it takes two or three hours. And that's right. something that was supposed to be focusing on payroll edits or whatever. And it just, it all smushes together. So we're trying to do that at 32 hours. And she's comfortable with that and she's checking out the boxes and she's gradually grabbing other things and doing okay. better. So things, it's a really slow, but at some point the 32 is gonna be capped out, right? And then it's gonna to have to transition to what what do we do about that other stuff? And part of it is prioritizing. So prioritizing for the select board really is in payroll and vendors and auditing and policy and those kind of things. And at some point, those things don't have time. And that's what I, that's what I found when looking at my job is that things that should be getting done like a 2016 investment policy revision that we needed to make is not done yet. And we're not doing investments properly as effectively as they can be. And those are things that the town administrator should be leading on the behalf of the board because you would never say don't do good investments and don't earn money well, right. Right. with cash laying around. Just let, let that stay there at one, you know, point seven. Right. So those are those are those are the areas that get missed when the board says, "Here's your three or four page job description and take care of it," and the town has grown. Yeah. So twelve years ago, when I started, that job description has grown and the demands have grown. And that the, has the description changed at all in your twelve Not, years? It Not hasn't really. changed much, but things have things have changed where there's vacancies and. There's, yes, you're what you I take, care, I take all that yeah. stuff through my desk. There's nobody else to deal with the animal control complaint we got today. Right. There's nobody else to deal with you know, the health officer getting a, um, a complaint they don't know what to do with. Yeah. You know, there's no local resources other than the town administrator. So the, the person that fills that position is distracted a lot. Yeah. And if distracted from a negative point that cannot focus on policies that help the town get to the next step or do things that are proactive or thoughtful or help you do your job on a daily basis. So that's a problem. That is a problem. There is a, there's a need to look at that. And that's what I've been trying to do to say, okay, so if the board says we expect our policies to be current. And when I go, we go to the Vermont bond bank and say, we're ready to do a, a bond application. They have a huge checklist and half the stuff is not up to date. <laughs> it's usually three years or older then they would reject it because we don't have our stuff together, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. It has nothing yeah. to do with day-to-day -day dealing with people walking in for a zoning permit or right. people wanting to, been working with a couple of people that just want to finish up stuff before the end of the year. And those take 45 minutes because somebody you know, wants to put a shed in their front yard and they can't meet setback. And then, so I'm really, the static that I see is the planning and zoning stuff interfering with the town governance stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. How, much, how, much, how much would you say our town clerk and your position overlap? We've obviously we don't mandate our town clerk. No, that's, we, one of, that's one of the problems, right? Since I mean, 2016, 17, we've 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 parted. So it, when I was first hired, to give you the background a little bit, 2012, the town clerk filled in as best she could for the town administrator that had just left. The town ministry that had just left was a very short term, created a whole bunch of paperwork that needed to be done, and the state calling and other people calling about paperwork and decisions that weren't being made by the board or whatever. Kim jumped in and tried to figure that out as best she could. But there's no backup. That's that's part of the problem. So when there's backup issues, prior to 2016, 
the town clerk was sort of overlapping with the board a little bit more. And then in 2016, with the finance director, we started looking at what the town clerk elected was really supposed to be doing. It had nothing to do with your job. You know, there's a, there's a pretty bright line. If you go to smaller towns, it's very blurry. Because usually the town clerk is the only person in the office. Right. right. And the chair of the select board comes in and says, can you post this agenda? Can you can you take minutes tonight because somebody isn't going to be? Yeah. There's a, it's a really tight, if you go to a small town, under 100,000 people probably, you find a very close overlap. But as the towns grow, and that's what I'm trying to get to, Hyde Park has grown enough to get to the point where the person from Massachusetts wants a phone call back in five minutes because right. they're important to do something and they're going to invest in Hyde Park. And if they don't get that call back, they have this negative feeling because they're not, they're used to that. Yeah. And I'm not using Massachusetts for no, reason. I... But as you get the different population in here, they're more demanding. Yeah. tell you the truth. I mean, we were going back and forth five or six times to the guy from Texas that just moved on to West Main Street and he's trying to do a really cool project in the village and he's trying to figure out how to give us easements for the sinkhole project because it's one of the ones that we're missing to move that project forward. And he's, I don't know, 45 minutes over five or six emails today. That, right. that just happened. Right. You know, I'm watching the clock and five o'clock is coming <laughs> quicker because I have to come down here and get the meeting set up. <laughs> I'm like, I'd rather spend more time with that person because it's he's making investments in the town. I guess, yeah. And I had to almost short circuit him because I had things stacking up. Yeah. Mostly planning and zoning stuff. You know, that's that isn't really helpful to people. So I'd like to see the town be able to move forward with whatever position with somebody that can do those it's the sake of discussion, the governance stuff, mm -hmm. leave the administrative planning and zoning, Separate. which is, you know, really, it's, it's not, it's a little bit cyclical because of the building schedule, mm -hmm. but planning is year round. We're getting, like Valerie just said, we're getting into all of the major town plan update, which is only done every eight years. It's usually a two year process. And if I'm staffed to that project, right. the time that ARCA, ARCA projects are taking a lot of time, yeah, at least yeah. that, and that's, interesting because that's all reimbursable time so when you're talking about your budget if you get into grant projects arpa administrative is 100 percent reimbursable fema is 100 percent re well eligible, eligible reimbursable right. is whatever rate it is arpa is 100 percent uh, fema stuff is 90 percent so the cost of cost of governance if you will when you look at a grant project like a lot of things the art project or helping things move forward some of that is reimbursable to the town. Not to mention the time you spend on grants brings money into to town that reimburses us for expenses. So like on all the annual grants programs that um, we get from the state, all of the town truck time and materials and labor is reimbursable as our, as our 20% match. So we get that money back but we need somebody here to administer the grant to get it back. So there's a, it's not like you're funding a governance type person with tax, $100, you know, all tax dollars, you have to go back to the grant programs to see that they're bringing money into town, making the town go forward, and they're getting some of their administrative time back. Planning and zoning fees probably pay, you know, 10% maybe of the cost of administering that. And it's not a full-time job, it's maybe, Depending on what you expect of that person, it can be in the you know eighteen to twenty four hour kind of range every week, mm -hmm. okay. something like that. Some weeks are worse, right? You know, and some are probably more so. Sand and gravel. The average. Yeah. Yeah. More so sand and gravel was seven months of constant yeah. back and forth. The neighbors were excited. The now it's in court. Might go through Act two fifty. You know, it's it's overlapping everything else. Yeah. And then that goes away. And then something, the FOSS appeal will take up time. I was dealing with a town attorney and the FOSS's attorney today on that for a little while. So it's like that staticky stuff that just comes up from anywhere doesn't help the town. Right. So, and, then, and most towns, when they grow, and this happened to Richmond 20 years ago, you, you separate those two. Yeah. You go from a town clerk to a select board assistant, sometimes part-time, and then you go to a town administrator that does a lot of stuff, and then you split that off, and then have, have the town administrator work more select board. So like highway, highway department stuff, 
you know, the select one will say, hey, you need to get in the, their face and make sure they're doing stuff different or whatever. You know, watch, watch their sand, watch their truck, watch how much the excavators operating, make sure that's, you know, people are happy out there. Make sure the, the aprons are done the right way, you know, because Mark is trying to put a covert in and the contractor's plowing through the eight inch lip on the road. How you, and the neighbor's like, hey, stop, can't you just go up? That failing kind of case. Yeah. There's nobody to do that kind of stuff. Stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's where that's where I'm thinking that a town administrator type role could continue, but the planning is only stuff should be set so up and, and just put over here. Let let the town administrator do what more of what you need to get done. All the policies need to be written up and down. We just finished the personnel policy. There's a whole, there's 10 or 12 policies in finance that haven't been touched for 10 or six years. <coughs> of course, a lot's changed in finance. Yeah, and those, all the names are wrong. You know, but the yeah. concepts are there. Yeah. But they're not helping the town move forward. So planning and zoning, you would say 18 to 20 hours average. 18 to 24, yeah. 18 24. And that, again, that is dependent on how much. Right. And I think part of the, I know there's an argument that, to not do much in zoning, bury it in with the town administrator and limit the capacity of the zoning administrator. <laughs> you know, that, that is a very thoughtful way to hamstring the zoning administrator because you don't want strong enforcement. You don't want somebody, you know, True. enforcing hard. You, you melt it in with another job where you automatically limit the capacity of the zoning administrator. That doesn't help. It to help, doesn't help two things. It doesn't help respect for the bylaw. It also doesn't help the DRB or planning commission understand what their problems are because nobody's thinking about their day-to-day -day problems. Yeah. Well, I think it's also, as you're saying, as the population changes, as we get more people from away that are used to that service, they're expecting those sorts of things to happen. And they're expecting answers and they're expecting when somebody some tells of, them something. Some of it is local, works. too. Some of it, we had Prospect Street, right? Those are all... Pretty much people have been here for a while. They wanted more attention. They wanted more notice of work. They wanted more hands-on site visits. They want, and those are people that come from Burlington, that work in Burlington, see how it's done out there. Yeah. It's just, a, it's the town has grown to a point where it's not just out of place people. It's just that as you get bigger, you have so much stuff going on that if you're not communicating some basic stuff, we had comments about, uh, I think it was Scott Griswold. You know, I want to know exactly where the highway crew is so I know when that ditch is going to be done. Yeah. And, and we didn't know. We just knew it was on the schedule for this fall. Yeah. So then we'll look at one of the meeting, the meeting I was in here. It was like, you're doing this right now. So like, okay, now we have a deadline. You know, it's, yeah. it's now. Okay. So we'll, Mark dropped everything and did it. Yeah. But it had nothing to do other than we weren't having the time to communicate to Scott. Yeah. But that, that, that project was into it for two years, though. I was into a project for up there for two years. Well, it's two pro there's two projects. There's, <clears throat> I mean, you know, no, but there's, there's two projects. There is, there is some things you can do simple and get it over with and make everybody happy, or you've got to go out to the long reach of you've got to get a permit for this, you've got to get a permit for that route. I mean, you know, <clears throat> what they were asking for up there was to get things ditched and to get the water back out of the road. And that's why I said what I said, that we're going to get it done. And I, that was, I heard that. I had to turn my volume saying. down. Yeah, we all did it. On the video. But the point of that was that there was no communication to say that there's, well, a, there's a deadline. But we had we had a we had a plan to get do the whole project at once and it was gonna be part of that uphill stuff. And that, the fix that was done, I hadn't seen it yet, but it was that lower hill section. And I think that's done now. And, and this this is and I agree with you, everything but the town's growing and everything like this. But they, you know, believe it or not, I've said this for a long time. That was where a road commissioner would come in good. A road commissioner would come in because you're just going to keep adding people, and adding people, and adding people. But you need somebody out there to do that stuff. About you know, when these jobs are going in the village, you yeah, need somebody around. Isn't that yeah. Mark's well, job? No, Mark's not a road commissioner. Mark is a road foreman. He's supposed to be working with the boys. Oh, the commissioner. It's hard. It's hard, hard to do. Well, Both ends what, of the bottle here. But I thought that's what he was hired for. No. No, he's a no, road foreman. No, road. He's a working war road foreman. See the what what you're talking about? We talked about once last year, which didn't work out very well. Uh, 
we had an idea to have the on-site person that would work with Mark. <coughs> oh, that's right. So when Mark is doing his culverts, that somebody else would be able to spend the time with the contractor and watch for all those issues. Which that shouldn't Dave, happen. Dave took care of that. Yeah, Dave, Dave, that was a personal conflict on the road or something. But if you had the right person, I think it would be helpful to Mark to say, Mark, you're the foreman. This other person's working with the select board, and they'll take direction from the select board. And right. then, then that person would direct. And that's kind of like a road commissioner type thing. Right. The select board used to be the road commissioner, one or two or all of you, I don't know, for 20 years. It would always be one person on the board that would actually be the commissioner. Uh, but then, you, you said it. Everybody's more demanding today. Right. Well, it's a higher Everybody's, level, too. It's not like I've dealt with a lot of people. This seems like a big transition 12 years for some reason. In the beginning, it was very quiet. Somebody would call up and say, my, my mailbox got broke, just let the highway crew know. If you shut that recorder off, I'll tell mail. you what the problem is. <laughs> <laughs> now we get a mailbox that's broken. It's like, can you come tomorrow? Right. But, you know, it's kind of that's, also, that's also the way of the world. You know, it is. Instant gratification. It is. Yeah, it's, everyone has their, you know, I, I used to have to go to <laughs> something in my engineering world. If I needed an equation figured, I had to go to a, a book. Now it's instant because I can find it on my phone and then get instant gratification. Yeah. That's just where we're at. It my, is. My position has changed a ton in the last 12 years as well. There's a little part of me here sitting here. I won't, I won't even, I'll straight face it. Where the hell does the money come from? You know, like, and I mean, I'm a town taxpayer, uh, you know, road commissioner, and then another person and another person. I, I think you're doing a great job. I just, I, it's, it's a juggling act. When can we afford it? How do we afford it? Right. Well, that's so, why we're talking about it. Yes. Because yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. what, what you can but, do. Yeah. yeah. Right. And he's only but, talking about one position, not a lot. But right, but we're, the, the one he's adding. Yeah. Well, this guy wants well, more he, highway. He guys. wants one, and he wants one. Exactly. <laughs> he wants well, a couple. It, it's what the one person can do. I mean, I'm, I'm in, in talking about this, like, so can what does the town administrator do? Yeah. And uh, is that the position then? Again, I mean, I I can see when you look at grants and keeping track of people and doing all that sort of stuff, but there's a position that at least a good chunk of it can pay for itself. Absolutely. So is, so is that, and I'm, I've talked with Ron, that in my mind could be a great Ron retirement job because it doesn't matter where you are, you don't have to be here. He does that stuff really well. A lot of it is paid for. Then you've got, so then we got our, you go look for a zoning person that is interested and does that sort of thing 20 to 24 hours right. a week. And then you're looking for a town administrator. And then if you've taken this other stuff off, can that be another 32-hour week job? Awesome. And, and there's there's a huge elephant in the room too. But Ron's Ron's talking about walking out like he's gonna retire. No, that's what we're talking. We're, I, we're I, know, I know, I know, I know that. But I, I mean, filling a small piece of that, we got to fill the whole piece of that. So, like there's yeah, a lot well, of there's a lot of knowledge over there that needs to go to well, someone next. Well, it isn't all going to go. And that I mean, it, it's you're, we're not going to find somebody like Ron take on those positions that's why to me with the sort of the things that ron enjoys and you can do far away if he keeps doing it then those new people still have access to him okay so we we we, we keep him here and a lot of that information is there again it's like with the finance person now just sort of it gets to roll out in a, in a slower in a time manner. period mm -hmm. so they really get it and they aren't so overwhelmed that they go i'm fleeing <laughs> right you know i'm so what we did yeah yeah <laughs> the well, other two people it right? does be it does begin with you all obviously so that the what matt just said is totally true you have a balance you know we could this is, this is the obnoxious kind of like other end but we could shut the office down on, to save money on your cost on fridays right Right, level fund everybody for one year. You're only going to work 32 hours a week now. Some places are doing this yeah. in the private world, yep. but we're going to we're going to save our costs by cutting services mm -hmm. to four days a week, and that is an obnoxious way because people will then you have to hear the people say, "I want to be able to pay my taxes on a Friday at noon." But right, they yeah, say, or dealt, or they adjusted. We dealt with this with the town people already once this year. Or they, why, or why they the town, Why aren't the town people working Fridays? Remember? Yeah. Right. Oh, right. The highway guys. Right. Yes. Yeah. So you know, we then we go back to okay, let's we value that re request, and we're going to have your you know, we're right. going to fund that for five days, and make sure it's uh, open five days. I'm just thinking if we're if we're starting to talk about this position, I, I feel like we talk about an overlap 
apprentice type of position to where they're learning what Ron does and Ron hands, Ron's handing the flag over kind of thing. And then start talking about Ron's next position when there's a sense of comfort out of us. If Ron's willing to work with us, how's the time to start talking about that? Yeah, I think, I, I think if you're gonna keep, and this is just trying to practically apply the work that needs to be done, not trying to think of job description at this point, mm -hmm. but the grant component could go to zero. I mean, the, the town, not that this is advisable, but the town could say, we don't want any more grants. We don't want the $20,000 a year from the state for the MRGP compliance. That's about what they're giving us. 27 this year, because that's <coughs> extra money. We don't want to go after any more major projects, you know, of two, $300,000. We're going to fund it all ourselves is, is the other option. How are we going to rebuild Main Street? I know, I know somebody that tried that. It doesn't sound like a very good way. No, it ain't. Which, no, it's not good way. I mean, there which are, you're saying it's not a good way, but it's, yeah. you're giving us options. It's, not, it's, it's an option. Yeah, yeah so I think if you're, if you're going to maintain sort of what that grant list, which is planning and zoning, it's yeah. highways, it's community development, and you have focus on those, finance and town administrator are really close. Are really close. Like when, when that was vacant, I had to slide over there. Right. And that was really two jobs for three or four months. It was tiring, but it helped me see that side better. Yeah. I guess it was a positive because <laughs> usually right. it's, yeah. you know, finance director over here and I'm here and we talk about the things that have to be done, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a structural, what system works best type of review. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think what we're doing with Jennifer and she's, she's going to keep progressing when she caps out and here's what stuff I can do within my 32. Then, then we'll have more information. The transitional stuff, we're still in that transition, which is kind of what, not only my position, but also with Jennifer. Yeah, right. I don't know where the cap is where she's like, I'm good. Yeah, that's it. I'm maxed you know, out. Yeah, yeah. And we're trying to get to that point because learning takes time and then, then she checks it off. And she was thrown into an audit at to the same time. Audit, to double audit. So yeah, double audit. So at some so. point, and I think in FY24, yeah. she's going to be settling down. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'll make the 24, but at FY23, she should have two audits behind her, working on her own audit. Hopefully, finishing that by June 30 is the plan. Yeah. So the 22 is done. We're caught up. As soon as 23 finishes, we start that audit sort of on time. Yeah. And I think that's probably when she'll have almost two years behind her, and right. she'll feel like she can t let us know how much grants she wants to take on, how much policy stuff she wants to take yeah. on, all that. Stuff. And we still need a backup. So the town administrator right now is a backup to payroll, is a backup to AP, because we have the memory to help and Krista can help a little bit. So our A and B teams are sort of set only if that town administrator can handle a little bit of the finance piece, which right. asking finance, planning, zoning, governance yeah. is, is a lot for anybody to be really uh, proficient or able to come in. They could learn it. I think what, you know, what do we want the town administrator to do it includes the basic jobs and the, the team B sort of backup to, because there's only four people in the whole office mm -hmm. with the front two people sort of set in the statutory world, except for some of the overlap with the payroll. Yeah, but part of it is realistically, Ron, is the number of hours that you actually work. Okay. I mean, maybe sometimes you put in 40 hour week, but I <laughs> Well, that's, that's part of my problem because I want to do a good job and respond to people. So I'm responding to people all weekend just because I know that that is something that helps me on Monday. But, you know, and if I were to say no, yep. Yeah, well, they're only show up during the My week. day on Monday gets worse because yeah. it's usually quick, right? You know, somebody's in the That's backyard. Same personality. I totally get it. I get it, too. I do and the same it's thing. It's anxiety if I leave it. It's same. It's anxiety over right. it. So it's yeah. easier to spend. Right. How, however, yeah. I do the same. A lot of people aren't going to get that. The new town yeah. administrator exactly. was. Exactly. They well, may say no, 4 o'clock, 0, zero, zero. zero. Would do it. Exactly. Um, I mean, I can be dealing in the world of health care. You know, young docs coming in, they're, you, they're putting There is one thing to be said about that, though. At four o'clock, when it's done, it's done. Once you get the people knowing that somebody's going to work Saturday and Sunday and respond to all these calls until Monday morning, they'll get used to that. They'll also get used to saying, this is it. Well, they'd also get used That's to true. closing the office <clears throat> on Friday. Sure. Well, you they're know, getting used to it. That well, <laughs> they, they, they do it. Well, they, you know, part-time in the summer. But if just to, if to scale back the budget, 
No, I think I think Roland, I think I think Roland's got it right. Is that you? Mm -hmm. You being the public can say to the public, say, "Here's our hours." Don't, That's it. Yeah. Only, this is the way it's going to be. The, but the only problem with that is we don't have enough staff. I mean, I don't have enough staff or time to deal with all of that on my schedule right. for 40 hours. That's the that's what I'm trying that's to find. That's my point about the 40 hours. So not only is the 40 hours squeezed, the work product that you're getting is less. Right. Because I can't spend I don't spend the time on it and go back up to 60 or 70 hours. I can't I don't want to do that either. I'm not talking about a lot of hours on weekends, but about a quick text message or phone call to keep somebody moving. Right. Right. You know, and not stopping work. Uh, you know, Just, the select board packet was Saturday morning. My wife was working, so I decided, okay, I get three, four hours. I can put that together. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. A, it's, even though it's not that big, it takes a long time. Yeah. A lot of stuff is yeah. dates and people and coordinating right. and no, researching. No. So you know that that kind of stuff would stop. I mean, it's going to get worse potentially with a new person that watches the clock. That's what I'm because that pile is going to get yeah. bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger, and it's going to get behind and behind. And then you get the complaints because right. somebody was misscheduled on an agenda exactly. or some. You, well, you're not you prepared. Done, you're, you're you're not prepared with a little bit of background. About there, there's going to be some of that lag just in just in learning the job, just in learning the job. Absolutely. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people have capacity. There's yeah. no doubt. People can get up to speed, and I totally get the transitional type thing and picking the right person. But I just don't see the the work ethic of of keeping things moving as a priority. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, they're not moving, and I get that from some state agencies. Sorry, I'm leaving right now. I'll call you in five days, you know, or something like that, instead of working an extra half hour to get an answer. Is it yeah. very different with the state as well? I don't know if that's union contract stuff or what, but so I'm just seeing more of that. And if, if we could get somebody that's you know willing to be really flexible as a salaried employee and keep people kind of happy and not be too much of a pain, which is you know whether they have hip surgery or hernia surgery, doing payroll from the operating table, which I was doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you won't get that. So yeah. I can almost guarantee you won't get that much. Not anymore. So Maybe. So, so how, how do we even begin to move forward? Well, there's two, we I think there's two. The in my brain, I'm, in my brain, I'm totally thinking about two things. I'm thinking about FY24, and we need to get to some place within this budget process where everybody knows what the plan is, because we'll, if we're going to hire somebody new for those kind of positions, we would probably be doing that in April or May, yeah, yeah. and then have some kind of overlap of some sort, and then have the sort of the budget fund that person fresh, you know, the way it's going to be for a while on July 1st. That's one way to think of it. The other way is that we can start a lot earlier and have a big, <laughs> a big rush because I'm <laughs> I'm on overtime already and I'm like I'm going to be done in like 35 days so let's start planning this new ad that's got to go out and that just seems too harsh I don't think I've ever said I'd ever do that kind of thing I don't want to I'm not threatening that but I'm just saying I've already looked at that as like just just not right doesn't feel right you know so uh, my wife just got approval again to work you know <laughs> away so she every once in a while UVM administration looks at things and like, no, we're going to keep it the way it is now for, for real, for COVID stuff. So she's ready to go to Florida <laughs> like, immediately. And she gets, it doesn't really matter where she is. Yeah. So that's hard. That's hard for me to you know, say no to her all the time. Yeah. <laughs> hard to counterbalance that. My counterbalance so is that's one, that's one, one, one thing you want to think about is 24 and where you want to be, especially with highway stuff and the road commissioner role yeah. and all those kind yeah. of things. Because if you really want that, there's a lot of time with road commitment. Every, I got a complaint today, you know, just about some, the Beaver Dam thing that's building up on Silver Ridge or Garfield. Can you come out and look at it and see if the highway guys can help me? I'm like, is that on private property? Yeah. Hey Mark, did that bother your road? Nope. Sorry, we can't help you until it's affecting the town highway. Call the state biologist, they might have some clues for you. And of course, that person wants something done immediately with our brand new excavator. I'm like, right. we're not going to send an excavator on a private property to fix a dam that is damaging your road. Right. When it's not affecting the town highway, it may be risking the town highway, as any beaver dam does, because always it's a culvert at some point if it fails. But but those are those are time consuming it's, it's things. Just back down. Those are time consuming things where the person may be new and just wants to see what right. the options are. And either Mark leaves his construction job. Or the gets a hold of the select board liaison or the town administrator. There's only so many options in this small 
town, right? But if you wanted that person to be more sort of in the highways world than I am physically, like on site and watching contractors and making sure aprons are done the right way, then that is a, is a that is a something that would have to be written into the job yeah. description. Say yeah. here, as the road commissioner, here's your three or four tasks that we want you to yeah. do and list those. Right now, the only thing in my job description says, willing to take on road commissioner, which really replaces the select board. And I don't think that's what you wanted to do with highway. Now, could could a road commissioner type position also do that person do planning and zoning? Could we could we mold that into one position? You're not gonna get this. I know it's two different no. brains, I yeah. think. Yeah, is it two different yeah. brains? It really is, it's completely different. Yeah, yeah. you have a construct like a nurse and an accountant. No, it's not. It's yes, not that it different, is it? Yes, it is. Really? Yeah, I tell you what. Yeah, the highway road construction stuff is skill right. and right. foresight and you know just common sense stuff. But you really have to know what your limits are. And when that, you, when, that you is, start, when you start doing the zoning and the, and the file, it's just the reading. And, and today, it, it's just legality. Go, go, do the job and get it over with. Instead of going through the whole book and getting this water mitigation version that water mitigation version it just it just gets too much i mean you know you got roads to take care of you got roads to fix go ahead and do it well you can't do that well you can't well you can but <coughs> they end up there are town roads well i know but you still have laws and rules well, you need that's, to follow that's the thing you kind of get a lot of state money <laughs> you've got you've got like, culverts that have been there for a hundred years and you got to change them. Go ahead and change them. Can't do it. You guys adopted your policies that say do not change that. I don't know. You have a 2019 road and bridge policy, which Mark French is required to follow. Telling him to go out and fix something is the wrong thing to say. Yeah, that's not even. It's totally policy. not. It's not in your policy to do what you just said. Is the liaison the highway? Right. If I mean, you want to, if you a 15, bro, bro, an 18 if you inch really want to really do that, 18, really do that, 18 inch culvert. I mean, yeah. no, that is. We just did it. We just experimented with that. You guys adopted a storm standard, a 50 year storm event. Mark had a 30 inch culvert. He did 36 inch because it was a little upsize. We. After he had done that, because it fails. So after that, I continued on with your policy, and it's supposed to be a 48 under your policy. So either you change your policy. Well, we can do that. You should have a debate on the policy. I can't have the road foreman going out there listening, listening to the do it quick policy when we don't have that policy. It, it, you upset the whole function of the government by it's, doing that. It's like them guardrails we put on the brook road. All they do now is keep washing out. Those are, yeah, those are temporary. Those can't <laughs> It's right. like, why didn't we, before we put the guardrails up, change the culvert and, and get it done with from the bottom up through? Because you don't have $300,000. Yeah, right, that because we culvert. didn't get the money. And it's a FEMA project <laughs> right. that's going through an extensive federal review. And I cannot operate or I cannot advise any town employee to do what you just said without the select board saying, throw out that policy. There's there's certain things that can't no, be done. Roland, you, you you're can. applying that we to have everything. Policies. though. you yeah. can't apply it. I mean, when I talk about policy and how to make things kind of agreeable to grants, to residents, to do things the right way, and then Roland says, just go ahead and do it. You don't need a road commissioner to do that. You need a foreman that just goes out and does whatever they want to do, and then somebody's got to pick up the pieces later. That you don't get grant money. You get liability from landowners who you can't send stormwater anywhere without permission from the downhill neighbor. So I, I really need to be clear on this because I can't have the select board sitting at your table right now listening to that kind of comment or recommendation and have the policy in place that you all voted on 2019. They're, they're totally in opposition to each other. And what are town employees supposed to do when that comes from the board meeting? Tell me what in the world. What, what do we do when there's a when there's a big flood like we had Halloween? We went well, that's and, emergency. We yeah, that's different. We changed everything. Well, you're the emergency person, so you tell us, right? Change it. You got forty eight hours. Well, right. That's an emergency situation. And after that, you have to go. We out have a, right. I can tell you exactly. We have a ten percent allowance on the upsizing of a culvert during a flood event. Anything more than that could be deemed ineligible by FEMA unless we do the sizing. That's by our 2019 policy. That's what I'm talking about. 
and then and then all well, the taxpayers you got, you got one person who's water mitigation person and they're gonna be all over the state of vermont no nope, that's a distraction go ahead you have your own policies that's what i'm saying that is a distraction your tax dollars that you put into your roads are supported by grants which have conditions to comply with your 2019 select board policy if you start to undercut the policy we stop getting grants or we're ineligible one or the other Right. If we don't, all if that, we don't have policy, that we're additional right. FEMA went from seventy-five percent to ninety percent reimbursable. And if we don't follow our policy, they will deny that grant. So, how much did we get for the Brook Road guardrails when we did that? It's under we did, yeah. Brook Road and Centerville Road have been spun off for a mitigation grant project, which will pay ninety-seven point five percent of repair costs and the new culverts that are being sized right now that are going to bring the town about four hundred thousand dollars and this cost to taxpayers two and a half percent only if we follow our policy that's the kind of thing i'm talking about if you tell mark french to go up and go ahead and do something and he's like roland roland there's a plan for this we gotta we gotta check it. he's not being true and lying to you he's telling you what he has to do under your policy and that i think that's a that's a problem our i don't policy. i don't know how we can operate like that our policy. Your policy, select board policy 2019. Well, would you rather have the taxpayers pay $400,000? Because that's what it comes down to. Well, that's just what Ron said a few minutes ago about getting rid of the grants and stuff. Yeah, that's Well, that's what he was saying. That's what well, he, he said he did that. He said he, he didn't think that's that. a good idea, but that's what happened. Because it's, a, it's a kind of an on or off kind of discussion we're having. Either you're on the train, so to speak, on the right. grant train, and you follow your policies, and you have staff that implements it, and you have staff that goes after the grants to save tax dollars, or you get off the train, make everybody happy, and willy-nilly go and make the repairs that are probably going to be short-term or create secondary problems because they're not well thought out, and then you end up with no progress. You're back to whatever your square was. So it's well, a long, pay, it's a long path. painful process. That I think the state there, there's a, there's a certain, so if the guys are ditching and they damage a culprit, there is, there is a replacement responsibility, responsibility. Yes. There is a, per our policy. there's more than one case law that says once the town goes out of its right away and touches something. Oh yeah. We don't want to do that. We might own that. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to do that. And we might also own the damage downstream if that fails. So you're not only just doing the fix it because I was helpful, you're also taking on liability because you touched it. These are all things that we try to do through the policy. So when policy is written, it's written to protect the taxpayers against some of these things. Once you go off the rails and go on to no policy, you're exposing yourself and you're not doing good projects. You're not doing well thought out projects. You're doing quick projects that might work or they might not and you're expecting your highway crew to make it not create problems, which is a huge deferred liability yeah. responsibility. Just put too much into it sometimes. Absolutely, that's, the, that's what I'm saying. You, you take those grants, you take on a lot of burden, you take a lot of time, it's painfully slow, and you get a good product and low tax dollar in the end. The other one, you can do it quick and make everybody happy for the short term, but you're creating liability and, and potentially costing, more risk and costing more money and, and it's all wrong and there was nothing wrong with beam road there was access to all the homes there was a little bit of sand from erosion on the hill on the travel service there was no access problem. well it's done now no it's done it's i don't done. know if it fixed it but it's done whatever they did i can't tell you if it fixed anything because it wasn't part of the any kind of engineering plan but i think there was part of the discussion though there was, there, was, there was an agreement to get that done ahead of time. Oh yeah, right. it was done. It was totally on the table to get done. Okay. It wasn't not going to get done. Yeah. It was just not timely enough. Well, let's let's move forward. I can see emotions around the table. <laughs> let's, let's move forward. Well, no, no, this no, this goes back yeah. to the whole. Do you want the town administrator to spend time making sure the policies are here to and be on site and do all those things? In addition, because we've taken off the day to day grant burden, which is a lot of the paperwork. And the person could spend more time in the field. That's that's a July 24 or 23 kind of discussion. Right. If you want to get there, then we backtrack into the staffing budget, which you're talking about now for FY24, and say, here's the pieces that we see as a board that we want to have in place for the long term. I'm talking about the next five to ten years. I'm not talking about one year. I'm talking about taking the town administrator role and 
sort of blowing that up a little bit, which we talked about for more than a year, because I talked about last budget season. And it's like, if you want these things to be done in a more, more thoughtful way, more effective way, take the planning and zoning off, throw more highway responsibilities and expectations onto town administrator, and, and potentially have a transitional period where the, where the projects that have two or three, four year life, which I'm working on now, are kind of worked over into this town administrator's world over short term. You know, so that's not a, it's not dropping everything onto one person to administer. And those things are all put in the budget where the grant person is paid for substantially from the grant right. portions. Right. Town administrator, hours are reduced to 32, so they get benefits and they get all the health stuff and whatever. Keep the finance at 32, but have a town administrator that has finance or some budgeting or something like that, because that person's going to have to work with you on this stuff next fall, probably, right. along with Jennifer, which will be a pretty good team to bring you guys through the next budget season. I think, by, you know, by then, Jennifer's just, yeah. just getting her used to the schedule of the budget, never mind how to put the numbers together. Right, not how it works. But by next year, she's going to have really good numbers for you, and, you know, and probably some projections. So I, I think that's what I'm envisioning is is the town of Hyde Park is in a good position next fall because you found the right town administrator that meets all the highway needs that you've been asking for and works well with finance and can guide the town on all those policy issues that you have with uh, just overall town governance. Yep. And I and I would be out by July at the latest with. 2024. Yeah. I mean, we have like seven Perfect. months left of the fiscal year. So my retirement benefits, if you will, are, are sort of maximized by getting to June because there's a calculation that state does by fiscal year. You have to yeah. you take your three highest fiscal years. So if a lot of people, you've probably seen this in other places, police are known for it. Yes, police. Highway are known. road foremen are sometimes known for it, but you build up your pay accrued right. time yes. and you make sure you take that before the end of that fiscal year because that rolls into your third year of gross income yes which boosts your three-year average which boosts your pension payment yeah so uh, there's plenty of city oh there's so many bad stories yeah. about cities yes <laughs> union contracts saying only the chief of police gets overtime yeah those you know, kind of things because they, they're going to get out right. so it's sort of like that because that's how the system's written yeah it's in it in this vermont uh, retirement system allows you to continue work. Um, so if I were to retire now, if there's a 30 day notice, I would say, okay, I'm November, I'm going to be on my 30 day notice. And then I could come back as full time temporary. But my calculation for all of fiscal year 23 is based on those six months. Um. So it's only a six month. Gotcha. Input because my uh, my wage after retirement doesn't okay. count towards the calculation. Yeah. So those are kind of just that's a little maybe too much information, but that's kind of what I'm thinking of mm -hmm. on the backside. Is how does this all work together? And it's very not easy to think about. It's not you only want to retire once, I think. <laughs> that's what it right. is. Exactly. You want to retire once and do stuff that you like to do after that. Exactly. Right. A very low, low. Roland didn't take that advice. He worked way too much. Right. But I'm retired. Yeah. Right, that's what he said. But you're still working. Yeah. But, but doing what you want. True. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the difference. That's yeah. the mix I think that I was kind of yeah. look for. Just do something you like doing after retirement. Exactly. Um, but anyway. So. Okay. Sorry, I got excited there, but really, it is a policy based position that's really hard to work on and then implement. And if you're not spending the time, you might as well get rid of the policy, which yeah. is what, well, and that, that could work out fine too, except you won't have some of the benefits of the policy, right? which is satisfying state requirements. And you know, everybody asks for your purchasing policy. Everybody wants to know about your internal controls. Yeah, but you still, again, if you don't have those policies, taxpayers are gonna pay so much more money. I mean, just in the world- If you're grant, if you're grant ineligible, money. your projects would all have to be cash-based and that, Sometimes it's good on small projects. I think Roland said that. Some projects you don't want to touch a grant because it's just easier to go out and do right. it yourself. Yeah. A lot of towns are figuring that right. out on sidewalks. I think Morris, did Morris now do a sidewalk on your own? 
They yeah. do what? More a sidewalk. Like not not take grant money, but just do a sidewalk. It was they're cheap. doing they letting people do it now. Who was just build it? Where? You build a place over there, you gotta if it's sidewalk, you gotta build a sidewalk front. Yeah. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. That's another way. So they are doing grants, right? That's a way to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Like look at um Bridge yeah, Street. Yeah. You're right. He did you, do all those when you, he put the you, apartments. You look how thick they are. Are they two inches? Oh. Uh, uh -oh. That's they didn't have somebody watching. Yeah, because it's homeowners. Oh, there's somebody watching. Oh, jeez, that's not, that's even worse. Our needs watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So well, it's all good. I mean, I think the conversation is good. We have no, that's we haven't resolved it, but that's mostly about twenty four. But that's good to know. What we need to start planning and th talking more about where we want to head on. Yeah, if the that. board wants to see those things continue to be right. implemented, then we have to have somebody focusing on it including the administration of it and the keeping it up to date and watching the new grant terms and all that other stuff that goes with the money these days okay okay well let's move along yeah let's take a break <laughs> depot street what's happening down there oh grants <laughs> great another grant <laughs> another yeah, so grant the lamar valley road trail as of july 1st is now a state maintained facility. They got a whole bunch of earmark money to do the construction from the Congress. And they're busy doing that because I think they have October deadline to finish. I don't know if they'll quite get there, but the rail trail is supposed to be fully operational for 93 miles at the end of this calendar year. I talked to the manager of that and he thinks they can do it still, even though it's top clock is ticking. So because of that, and they know that each town is doing its own uh, evaluation of what they want to build along the trail, trailhead, bathroom, artwork, whatever. They are having a uh, grant program, community, community trail grant or something to that. I think I sent you the link, the mm -hmm. information with it. And they will pay uh, 80, 20, 80% for a scoping study of the intersection on Depot Street. So at that intersection, we get complaints all season that. about crossing, visibility, speed on Depot Street, safety. There's no connection to Main Street there. People want to take a turn, they have to walk up the travel lane. They don't have a safe place to get on the sidewalk. And even if they did get to the sidewalk, there's no ramp there. So somebody put a curb on the, cur the, yeah, corner. On the corner. So this particular one is due November 1st, which would be a scoping study, which basically says, look at the intersection, look at the rail trail, probably include, probably include the triangle between the trailhead, Depot Street crossing, and that, and that corner. That's where people are going to be walking and trying to move around and they don't, they don't have good visibility there. Uh, it could include some traffic calming, which is the just ways to try to slow the cars coming down on Depot Street. And I don't know what those are. Sometimes you squeeze bumps, you know, or something on they Depot Street. They call Street. it sh shared highway. So you put you put the, the ball clouds in for your, your crossings. They neck it down. They call it shared highway. Yeah, maintenance. You tough. put the one way bridge back in. The yeah, through, exactly. Been through Waterbury. <laughs> yeah. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, Johnson has a little bit. Waterbury's really bad. Yeah. Waterbury, like all oh, the new Waterbury stuff. I yeah, all the bump outs. Yeah, you should go see it. It's the bump outs. I guess are, I don't know what you're talking about. They bump just, out. They redid, Johnson. They redid Main Street in Waterbury. So they, they no now, So you know we how? Don't? No. Okay. You know how you would you would normally have like parking and your parking figure of curb line like you have you have your your travel way and a curb line straight. Yes. And every sidewalk they bring the road in into your parking eight feet, so they curb it in. So then it next to the road down, it makes you feel like you're in a narrower, so you, oh. slow, you slow down. They call it shared highway. Never it's a huge that. thing going on in Vermont right now. Okay, so it's like a mental, you think you're tricking people almost? Oh, think you are. There's no doubt. When oh, you drive, really? Oh, yeah, it's a mental well, thing. When you're driving it, you're... you're it's in Johnson. I guess Plows I don't pay, atten I'll pay oh, yeah. attention. I haven't Johnson's not in yours. Not, you go, go through Waterbury. Huh, okay. You lose parking. You tomorrow. lose a lot of parking. Stowe. I'm going, I'm going Stowe, there Stowe has it. You, yeah. Oh yes. With the okay. new with the new granite pieces that come in. 
Yeah, part of that is from the federal highway. That's right. Got it. They're, they're seeing a, okay. an unacceptable right. rise in pedestrian deaths. Yeah. So the, the pedestrian deaths are going oh, up, so okay. federal money is putting money to the states to gotcha. slow, <clears throat> slow traffic. Oh, and we'll, we it. have the same opportunity with the, the Main Street project at the village. Okay. Yeah, which everybody pretty immediately, and, and they think about trying to plow that. Ooh, right? <laughs> like, okay. Mm. Okay. So you're going to start this? This is just a scoping study oh, application. Scoping. It's a really short application, just says, yes, cool. we're interested to uh, 20, I don't know, it's a $20,000 type of thing, because we have a lot of engineering done, a lot of scoping studies for a big section of it would be 60 to 100. This is just one intersection, so we yes. take bids on it and do all the normal stuff with the 20% coming out of sidewalk reserve, which is plenty of match money in there to do it. Okay. So, um, I bring it up because they also, and part of that, are for facilities too. So we potentially could have a joint, not, not scoping study, but construction grant for the, um, uh, the, the, um, it's the booth there, the kiosk. So the kiosk has been sketched out at the rail trail oh, right. since 2006. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been around and a while. And there was a grant already for 15000 that nobody could build for some reason. So that was back in 2008 or nine. So we could have a, a second application for the construction of that kiosk, which is, it's on the plan for the north east quadrant of the rail trail intersection with that crossroad. So we have the parking on the northwest side right now. Okay, right. With the four lift. Yeah. And then you go across that little slack cut through road and there's yep. a little green space there. Yeah. That would be the northeast quadrant. Okay. That's where the kiosk would go. Yeah, and then that leaves people up to the sidewalk, end of the sidewalk. Right. Okay. So that's why that was picked. The art project is on the southwest quadrant. Right. And the southeast quadrant right. is a ditch and too small. So we'd be done with it. I don't know if you want to apply for that um, construction grant too. I think that's up to 45,000 with a 20% match. Also from sidewalk reserve. The original estimate was 20,000, you know, 15 years ago. No. <laughs> it's really just a shed with, you know, nice roof and all that stuff, which we don't have a design for, but you can very easily amend Greg's plan. Greg has a plan and a sketch. And all the parts yeah. and pieces uh, done already. Something they have on Cambridge. Yeah, Cambridge, Morrisville, I think Danville. They all have. Right. They're all starting to develop right. these little kiosk areas where you can put a map. We have the map already upstairs in the living room. Yeah. We have a whole yeah. rail trail map up there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to apply for that. It doesn't hurt to apply for it, right? Yeah. Okay. But I, I bring both of those back on the twenty fifth so you can see what. Yeah. What the applications yeah. look like. If you want me to spend time on that, of course, that's the that's the oldest question. Because if you don't want me to spend time on it, I can do other work. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mean to spend time if you want to proceed with the use of the sidewalk reserve, which is where the match would come. So if you're if you're cool with that, then okay. we can do that. Great. Tag sale? Yeah, tag sale, let's see. So I read through the list of this last night. Got one of the names I know personally, is there a way that, like, the she could be dead? Like, how does that work? There's five. She's not. Sounds not dead. No. Okay. She I knew that's what you were talking she about. She has to be like 125 years old. She's not quite that old. <laughs> no. No, I know, but I, God bless her. I mean, I loved the woman when I was younger too, but I yeah, feel like I'm she's... almost 50 now and I've known her since I was five and she was 60, 70 then. I just, <laughs> so we reach out to people. How does this work? Yeah, she, just for my I, she, caught, like, she caught my eye too, actually. So honestly, she caught my eye to like to, to reach out or figure out. You know, I know. I don't I know. know. I, I so know. How, how does it actually work? Well, there's, yeah. there's two. Okay. There's Educate. Two, when they go, the, the town necessarily isn't a land developer. Right. However, there are certain times when there's a public interest in a parcel, 
because it supports a town project or there's a plan that says yep. if this property comes up, make sure we are involved. Yep. And we got notice on these five properties. There's somebody came off it. Uh, the uh, the Pratt property came off. Yep. So the select board has a choice. Do you attend the tax sale or not on November 3rd? And if you're interested in any of the properties and want to designate a member, they show up down here on that day at that time and they're basically a bidder. And you just raise your hand if you're interested. And and the minimum bid is the tax is owed. So sometimes a property just doesn't get bid on, nobody shows up, and the town raises their hand because you all have said, here's our properties we're interested in. You raise your hand, we get it for taxes. It sits for a year before you get your tax collector deed and own the property. Yeah, or if they pay if they pay their taxes, then your money gets reallocated. Is that how that works? Gets yeah, they, yeah, the money just stays there. You know, we get our interest back, and they have to pay the interest to redeem the property. So we earn interest at eighteen percent, I think, while it's sitting in this one year, and they have to pay that if they pay it off. And or, they, or it becomes the time. tax sale is here on the November third. Yeah, here. here. It's sometimes it says front step, but I think in the winter they have it. The other option is <laughs> some of these properties are looked at and they just seem to make sense to the board. We don't wait for the tax sale and you approach the property owner and say, I see you got a tax sale list. We'd like to talk to you before then and maybe we can uh, encourage them to have a deal with the town before the tax sale. And then it comes off the tax sale if they've sold it and somebody paid the tax. There was one piece of property on that that, that, that you feel the town's interested in. Yeah, so Brian's the first one that said anything. He said there's two or three properties on that list I'd like the board to talk about, which is why it's on the agenda. Oh. Then he couldn't come tonight. Oh. So I'm pretty sure the properties he was talking about without him telling me are the two that surround the town property on Route 100. So it's Larry DeMar's property on the south of uh, 5211 VT100. Yeah, yeah, I know. And then Thelma Thumpley's on the okay. north side. And that's the one. Yeah, so both of those properties. Thelma is on in North High Park. Yeah, she had two properties. She gave her property in Eden to Andy and Amanda. Okay. The one up on. Yeah, the high, North High Park. Where is she is nowadays? There's no. That's what I was afraid of. Ten well, she's okay, but. Is she capable of this? Probably not. I wonder if Amanda knows. I'm going to tell and this this property is in North Air Park. Mm -hmm. I think it sits. Well, there's a map, right? Yes. Um, Can I see it? Yeah. <sighs> this also goes back to our. This this goes all the way back to. The property, the uh, the hall. Yes. I see. So that's probably as why it is. This has the abandoned cap camp on it. Right. Little thing by the road. Yeah. It almost gets to it. Almost gets to the guy in Valley Hall that quick though. Yeah. Guy in Valley Hall is like three. Property south of Wells on this map. I don't know which one you're looking at. But yeah, okay. I, I do see it. Yeah. So, without speaking for Brian, I think those are the only two that sort of surrounded the town property. Which, yeah, that would make sense. And yeah. then there's another property that abuts the state parkland, which I don't know what that's good for the public of Hyde Park. Right. <laughs> you probably wouldn't bid on that one per se, unless it's just part of a conservation plan that you have. At the value of the taxes, I, th I think the town would be interested in them in my personal asset, but I, I or think interest, but I, I don't I don't see that the town should make big interest payments on any of these or big. That one right there, one of them was straight full of novel weed. Right? That's where they've been dumping it, isn't it? <laughs> it's in the property, it's so it's in all the weed. That's, a, that's the town yeah. property. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but Thelma's property next to it was like all overgrown. No, right. Because it's probably spread. Right? Yeah. Here. From you. Yeah. 
Yeah, all that bad stuff. So should we wait and talk to Brian and get mm -hmm. to make sure? Well, you have until November third, so you can talk him again. Oh, the true. Okay. The property may okay. come off by the twenty. Oh, true. As well. Okay. The town may decide to approach the landowners. Okay. That are of interest before the twenty, the third of the third. Okay. So those are your kind of your options. Okay. I know that when we talked about the Southern Gateway project up in North High Park, we were looking at those Thelmas and Damar and mm -hmm. uh, the corner lot Mr. Nye owns. Uh, he has like a singular duplex there that's falling apart right on the side of the road. Yeah. Um, so those are the, that is the gateway from 100, 100C. Okay. And 100 C. Okay. But yeah, if Brian can make it back on the 25th, we can confirm. Okay. And in the past, the Roger Audet's attended and he's bid for taxes on two or three of them. And mm -hmm. I don't think we even got through the one year on mm -hmm. any of them to have a new town property. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the 5211 one was donated to us by the bank after foreclosure. So that was not a tax sale. That was just foreclosure. Okay. This, um, land banking is what it's called <laughs> under the technical term where the town buys land for some future purchase, which is an allowed use under ARPA money too. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the Zofar loan, Zofar, am I saying that right? Zofar. Yeah. Loan. So far, yeah. So she sold part of her loan condition was that she paid the town in full. When she leaves the residence on Battle Row, she did that. She paid the twelve thousand. Great. And that account needs to be closed. The select board controls accounts opening and closing, so you have to have a motion to close the. Okay. So she was a. Can I just get backstory of why, why she owed us money? Uh, I think it was 1990, potentially, 1992, somewhere in there, where the town had a grant to help with the Sterling View Mobile Home Park, and they had money for two or three other uh, affordable housing projects, individuals. Okay. So I think there was a couple on oh, I didn't know Mason that. Road, yeah. Battle oh. Row, maybe even in the uh, industrial park where the town was involved with helping people or entities buy the property with conditions that would be paid back. Oh. So it was a zero percent, no payment type loan for almost twenty years now, right? Or thirty years, long yeah. time. So the property is sold to pay it back. Oh, cool. Yep. So now it's here. It's going to be split the same way the Harvey loan was split when Harvey paid his back yeah. uh, on the park. And Wilka gets a third, and Hyde Park gets two thirds. Okay. So that's where that's all headed. Okay. But the account had to keep a balance of. I think it was five hundred dollars. I will also go back to the towns of that one third, two third, and that just goes to our general funds when that comes into us. Select board voted to send. Uh, I can't remember the exact percentage. Oh, it was just something we voted the other night. Yeah. Oh, oh, the so the so the highway reserve before. and the, yeah. and our economic development fund. They're the place you can pull money for matches. Yeah, split those two. Yeah. Split those two. So will we have to make a vote for this money. No, they already to, did. No, no we have to a, make a vote to close the account though. Make a motion, excuse there's me. Already, Make a motion. There's already a vote that, to split it. To split it, yeah. okay. I'll make a motion to close the account. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll second. I'm waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Are you voting or are you opposing? I want to oppose. Any reason? Okay. <laughs> to close the account, you're opposing? Can you do that? Uh, sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Number eight, bonus pay and ETO. So we have a gap in our policy. <laughs> it's a gap between practice and policy. There's the last couple of hires actually have asked for time off during their like probation period for a week or whatever, do vacation. And the letter of hire allowed them to go negative um, on ETO because they hadn't been long enough to accrue it. So the question of, shouldn't we have that in a policy? <laughs> came up from Jennifer who said, I, you guys have done this, you did it for me and 
but now we have an employee that's not you know working because they're injured using up all their ETO, what do I do with this 10 hours of, of time? That, Cause they're supposed to get up to their 40 somehow to be full-time benefits and all that business. What are they going to apply for that missing time? So I said, well, I think this has got to go back to the board. There's nothing in the policy about current employees. The letters of hire have dealt with these new employees and it hasn't, hasn't been an issue. They stay long enough to earn back the negative. But don't we have a disability? Disability is eight days. Or short term or long term or whatever? Yeah, short term is eight day wait and then 50% capped at $500 a week. So if you're- Oh, so he wants the difference to use his ETO? Can you do that? Yeah, so we've, we've everything, everything, every policy we have, including the short term disability says you can backfill that to get to your full time hour. So they use 50% of short term disability to get there and 50% ETO to get to hundred percent of their 40 hours. Oh, okay. I didn't know if disability allowed you to do that. I'm yeah. Sorry. So like with Kim's, uh, she's on short term disability. She's getting the cap, which is 500 a week. And then we're paying her the net difference out of her voted salary. So she's getting her salary with 500 from the insurance. Gotcha. And that goes to pay Linda Martin or whatever support. Kristen needs. Gotcha. Okay. So that's okay. how that's working. The okay. Same thing. Okay. And she had, she's got ETO unlimited because she's got a salary that's paid for the year. <clears throat> with no ETO. She has no ETO. She's just guaranteed her voted salary. So is there, is this something that's in the union contract? For, no, for no, the, well, it's in the, it's in the, in the union contract that you refer to the personnel policy. Okay. And the personnel policy doesn't say what doesn't happen. happens. Okay. So the only two okay. options are unpaid, pay the person basically 50% because that's what short term is going to cover, or um, let them go negative and then have that uh, accrued back over seven hours of pay period or whatever. The, Whatever the formula is. Can we let them go negative, but in the interim, they terminate their last paycheck will be accrued costs and negative. And, are, we and able to, are we able to attach well, you can, stipulations? You, Absolutely. Attach, no, you, can, you can say, you could say that they, um, a negative is approved up to X hour. I was going to say, what are we right. talking here? What's and the then, one to accrue? And then no time off. For vacation allowed until you get it back. So you have them. Can, can yeah. You, you wouldn't let them take another vacation, you know, keep it going negative. Okay. They'd, right. They'd have to let their clock run until they get it back to a positive. I mean, how much are we talking? We didn't know until Thursday because oh. we were, it was uncertain until last Thursday. Oh, okay. So it's the work, return to work was with today. So they had a holiday Monday and then back to work. Oh, today. oh, oh. So it's maybe only one week. But last credit, last week it went negative. Gotcha. During the 80 hour bi weekly. So now we're stuck with a what do you do with that negative? Okay. Without having a policy, we, we just paid the 80 hours and said we have to run negative last week. And then you how much negative are we right now? 16 hours, 20 yeah. hours? Yeah, like 16, 20 hours. It's not, it wasn't, we thought they were close enough, then we looked at it again. Yeah, like, oh, just it. short. Just so short. do we want to, do we want to make policy out of this? Saying we, we're allowed negative up to 40 hours, because in, in theory, up to 40 hours, if, if somebody quit in the time of being negative, the last check would go towards their negative pay. Exactly. On a bi-weekly, yeah, right. you know, almost balance out. Yep. I think a, a an amount maxed for sure. And I like, you can't take a vacation or any time off until, well, unless an emergency, of course, obviously, but to, so you can't, you have to pay it back before you can keep accruing. You can't keep going negative. Well, I guess if we put a max at 40 though. You can't exceed the amount uh, you get in the calendar year. You can put that. Right? The, the um, you can't use it until you end up using all your tone. Right. Right. Something like that. You can't go negative beyond your amount of earned time. Right. There you go. 
Does that make sense? You know, if Ron has 64 hours and Ron uses 40. But here we go back to the back to the policy again. Everybody wants to follow the rules and regulations, but we're changing this. We're going outside the contract. They've got a contract. No, no we aren't because we yeah, don't no, have a contract. No, I asked about the contract. Asked about the contract. I asked about the contract. That, that's what he's saying. The contract says contract. refer to the policy. That we don't, we don't have a policy. Have we don't have a policy. So that's why we're creating one. Yeah, you're, you're being generous, I guess, because the only thing in the policy is unpaid leave. We pay them for 60 hours. But that needs your approval too. <laughs> so one way or the other was coming to the board. So either you keep with the unpaid policy and that person's working gets paid for 60 hours in their 80 hour week because they're short term. Yeah, that or let the other employees help him out and donate some of their time. I know, I brought that up and nobody, no, at least nobody in highway was offering up ETO time. I wouldn't either. So they have that bank set up. Yeah, her plans all who, who is this for? Jason. Oh, well. But you're rolling, you're right, we do have the bank set up now in policy because you did that back in March right. where you have the ETO bank. Yeah. That's got a zero balance. So it take people that I mean, don't what's make, it gonna hurt for somebody giving five hours and somebody else giving five hours? He'd be equal out. He, he, he could have covered it pretty quickly, yeah. But there wasn't that yeah, much. Yeah, it's not, it's not he's just borrowing hours. It's not like they're giving it his No, they'll be taking the, somebody else's hours. Oh. Once you donate yeah, it, it's it it's gone from you, yeah. but I see. It works pretty well for like me and I think uh, Ryan, maybe, who are close to 300. So rather than lose it, we could donate, you know, 10 hours a week because we know we're not going on vacation and we don't want to lose it on that automatic. Uh -huh. The automatic cap is 300. So you could fund it right. that way, I guess. But it hasn't been funded yet. Probably should have a whole work session with staff on that just to mm -hmm. give all these scenarios. It's in the policy, so they could actually have like a training. <laughs> Training thing to build that in. What are we looking for? Some direction that Jennifer can follow, which is if somebody is in a situation where they don't have ETO, then she knows she can pay up to that 40 hour cap or whatever terms it is without going to you for an unpaid leave request. And that usually involves how long you're going to be out and all those discussions. If somebody's going to be out a long time without any money coming in, that's some people just leave at that point because but they, how much they can't do the How job. many hours does this guy have before this injury or how many woman or whoever it is, or how many hours Plus, they have before that injury? How many hours uh, do they take throughout the year? Uh, do so less than a year. Less than a year, about a year. I forget how long he's been here. So he didn't, he didn't have time to crew the, a lot. So, but he's been taking miscellaneous, normal vacation stuff. He hasn't been abusing it or anything like that, where he inappropriately just worked it down or anything like that. It's just the way it. Well, if we're going to do something, we're going to go do no more than 40 hours a week, like you said. That's what I said. And that way, a week's covered. If they, if they leave us, <coughs> we can't attach their check. Yeah, you can right. attach it. That makes sense. We can yeah. attach yeah. the wages to pay off that. Yeah. Negative balance. Yeah, if they leave early, we'll just do a deduct on whatever's, yeah. a, whatever's owed. Normal, pretty normal. Should we put thought. that in, that yeah. should be in the policy, in the policy too, policy. right? Yeah. Yeah. So we. What's, yeah, so you have a maximum to do hours. That. If you, if you probably should write this up as a policy amendment. Oh, um, yeah, to the. For, so next, that's, that's, for next meeting. That's 40 next hours. Meeting. 40 hours. Max. Max negative. And if max negative, right? right? Right. And then how, and then they're supposed to work it back to positive, not take Before another 20 point. and not keep it in negative all the time. Yep. And if employment is terminated for any reason and you have a negative ETO balance, that amount will be deducted from your final paycheck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Threw that out there. That's a professional. <laughs> Thought you knew what you were talking about. I did. <laughs> oh, and then bonus pay is in there too? Yeah. So I, see type, that, I see that in our warrants, they took the payment. So does that mean they accepted it? Yeah, they signed the memo. Mm -hmm. So they were happy with that? Uh, that's the second question. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, they took it, they must have been happy, right? I didn't get a thank you. 
know like, hey, that was at least generous. Something. I didn't get bonus this year. I didn't get anything extra, so. I it's funny I thought about that too. I didn't either. But, yeah. I, I don't want them to come back in a month and be pissed off. Yeah, I think the discussion you had at your meetings was something along the lines of, we're going to do this, yep. and we're going to take it up during budget season yep. for, for July 1st. And that if anybody comes in between there from the highway, then they, you need to repeat that. But yeah. I, yeah. And that was the that was the plan of attack, I guess. Have you heard any disgruntledness? Me? Yeah. No. No. Okay. You smiled. No, I haven't. <laughs> So the, the bonus question was related to, uh, I think Brian's the only one that talked about it. So we're we're going to go ahead with the three union people. And we talked at one of the last meetings about the adjustments that were made to Krista and Jennifer and the three highway guys were going to get something. And that left me and Mark. I thought we voted to do that. I know so too. Not in, not in the minutes. We didn't. I could have sworn we did a motion. I thought we agreed, I thought we agreed that you and Mark were going to get the same. Was that not? Was that in no? The it wasn't meeting? in the minutes. Well, that was the agreement. Yeah. So that, no, I know that was the agreement. Yeah, I might have. For the record, we need. <laughs> that could be your note taker's fault because. It's just I talked about the union. We agreed. We agreed that you and Mark were going to get the same. Right. Yeah, we did. Because so you, you said you wanted you'd like some more ETO, and I said no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ETO. Remember that very well. Yeah. Oh, see? <laughs> you wouldn't understand my notes, but I put Mark wrong, <laughs> yeah. which meant you get it too. <laughs> so I'm really sorry. That is, I, that is I actually problem. looked at it in the warrants and noticed that you and Mark didn't get it, and I was one. That's why I was that's what, yeah. that's, what, that's why it's on the agenda because yeah. I, because if you remember, I, I didn't want to leave Mark out. Yeah, we said Yes, we said did that. say that. Oh, and, yeah. and, Yep. And I should have noticed that when you did the minutes I know. too. You, you even said I that. I you said bullshit. Dude, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so should we make another motion to well, make that official? Well, Jennifer needs some direction. It's already done. It's already done. Well, no, well, it's not in the minutes. No, and they didn't get it because I didn't. That was my fault. Ron and Mark will get the same thing. So the rest just, of wait, got. wait. Do, do we have the minutes to be approved tonight? No, it's from two. We already approved them. Well, here, we'll just go ahead with it. You can right. do another motion. We have yeah. it right here. Yeah. It's the same it's motion. A, yeah. It's, a, it's an action yeah. item. Yeah. Right. So, sorry. That was my fault. Way to go, Chaz. I know. That's why I don't like to take notes. Wrong. She's taking money right out of your pocket. I did. And Mark. Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, so I moved that, uh, that Mark, Mark and Ron get the same bonus as the others. Yes. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 She <laughs> says no, you know you're done. Right? I know. <laughs> I tried to get it to not happen once. No. <laughs> okay, the warrants. Can you give me those, Matt? I don't think I finished mine. Them. <clears throat> Put them right in that folder. They're all done. Oh. I don't even know. Does anybody have any questions or concerns about them? Too much money. <laughs> it's always too much money. <laughs> the cleaning lady people here. Have we ever? Have you, I've, I've, how is that determined? I remember. Kristen's doing it. Kristen's doing it. Uh, she's a. Or no. She is a. Waiting for Karen Stackpole to return a letter that deals with overtime for elected officials. Yeah. And blended pay rates and. Okay. All this other stuff, which got way complicated, believe it or not. And this, and I got part of my list from her, which is part of the union thing, and then I have this yep. next. I just started calling around for some deep cleaning of the carpets, which is a specialty job. I don't think anybody knows. Well, I, I saw- Who does that? Uh, Mr. Clean in Newport does it. And then also um, in the library, there's a cleaning person in there. Yeah, I they, see wanna, they, they wanna come over. They won't. Yeah, yeah we're we too busy. See, we already checked with them, yeah. But if, if, if anybody knows of Mr. Clean or whatever, I don't, just it's really just getting this room ready for the election. So I'm, oh, I scheduled right. the, the plumber and the sheetrock guy are supposed to come in before November 8th to open that bathroom up for the election. And I want to get the rugs done for the election too. I'll forward you his number. Yeah, thanks. 
can I have a motion to approve the warrants, please? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, okay. Um, the minutes. Ooh. <laughs> Probably better not even look at them. Since I don't know what it is. Um, you can sign this vice chair. I can? Yeah, because he's not here. It's just a regular, it's a letter we send out with each. Okay. Okay. Anyone look at the minutes? To make a motion to approve those. Is that a no? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve them. I did look at them. 27. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stay. Other business. All sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. See notices. Okay. I'm okay with not going into executive session on the Minaj thing. I think we'd leave it on the table. Yeah, I actually wanted to bring that out too. I, I think it's time to talk about it. I, I'm, I'm, I, it's, it's. It's been a little while. And the the, the conditions have changed. Yeah. A lot. Where are we at with conditions? Well, Can I, you? I, well, I put it on there. Well, and the, on the agenda to say that things have changed. Like yep. Oh, okay. So we, uh, Thursday or Friday, we got a survey done by Matt Reed where Manash is making his grand dollars lot a little bit bigger in the northwest corner. So like 2.25 rather than 0.5. Two acres. So he's taken that partly to contain the septic system. Gotcha. Which was also a delay because they had to do testing it. So it was a cumulative thing all of Manash doing. Not, we're not doing anything, we're just waiting. So the proposal to voters, and the bond was based on 25 acres plus or minus, which by the new survey was actually 24.5. Mm -hmm. Now it's 22.5. Has a little bit of an impact in the sense that it's slightly a change in terms, because usually you pay land based on acreage and whatever. Having the house site there was already there. That, yeah. that, didn't, that didn't change anything. And there's been no other physical changes to it. And he hasn't proposed any changes since his original dollar amount. But well, the original we, proposal to the town was a potential sand pit, right? That's what that's what kind of has been the, the quirk, I think, the knowledge to the town. One of the original ideas yes. yeah. was that. And then it morphed into, we need to think about this from a community-wide. Yeah, what do you want to do with that? That's how it went town meeting day. Right. It started as sand and gravel deposit is there. At town meeting day, it was more like a broader community discussion before we decide what to do, including testing it when the purchase and sale agreement is signed, and that hasn't been signed yet, so we don't really have permission to go on there. And do it. I, I just don't. I I don't. The way uh, the way you were headed in the economy, I as a taxpayer, I, I don't think it's wise. A and B. I don't think Monash has been very forthcoming the whole situation, and I don't think that. With additional setbacks, the sand pit will never happen. Do we with Act 250, with the appeals, with everything we're dealing with right now with the neighboring pit, I, I think it's. Oh, right, true. It's that this one's even more in your face. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, true. Oh, well, yeah. True. 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 Folks out there, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, and then to, to do any type of community action, you know, low income housing or anything that would, you know, it would never happen in that, in that area. Well, area. and that, pragmatically, that's not a good area for that kind of development. You know, you want to right, do it where right. you're close to services, so that's you right. have to have transportation that, to do that, anything like that. So my, so even if you do a community yard or something like that, it's been yeah, talking about there. Right? In my opinion. They're, they're complaining about going up the ball field. Right. True. Exactly. True. Yeah. No, they are. They, yeah, they are. I mean, my my opinion, my opinion, it's it's expensive for for a benefit to, to the town taxpayers. I, that's my opinion. I'm throwing it out there. 
I, that's why that's how I feel. And 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 I feel the same way as you do. You do, and you were you were kind of for it too in the beginning. Well, I think we all were, I was right? For it. Well, right? We all have been. I was right, but interested yeah. to listen to the scenario I and agree. listen to it and see what the taxpayers said and yeah, and you stuff. Taught but, me a lot. Um, I, I have right. talked to quite a few taxpayers about yeah, yeah. that land, and some of them talked to me about it. Yeah, I and um, and I feel the same way Matt does. It's just it's just gone from this to this and well yeah. and it keeps changing you don't know how much else is going to change you yeah, know we still haven't agreed to interest rates and, like, yeah okay yeah. well and then we we're trying to figure out you know if we because we would bond and you pay for it you don't want all the money at once oh, and man. everything it just right. it's just everything just Correct. gets it's like i think i'm perfectly comfortable walking away from the yeah. the revenue the revenue stays in the town it's not like i mean with us buying it we lose revenue Correct. We, there's a 25 it. year hold on agricultural loan right, right. and it doesn't I, I just I, I don't see it a benefit to the town taxpayers. No, yeah. I think it's all just shifted too yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. Uh, exactly. The only benefit would be a potential soccer field. I know. I was going to say and I, and I, you are your rec fans, and, 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 and I agree. Numbers. If it wasn't so much money, yeah. Yeah. exactly, Rory. Really. I was going to say that. Yeah, if it was. Well, and you don't know what's going to happen right. there. You know, yeah, the town passes on it. You had no idea what's going to happen. I mean, right, so. you know, I think it's a great thing what they've done up there to them ball fields and stuff. Yeah. I can't understand why people would. Complain for their kids to, <laughs> but people are going to complain anyways. Exactly. Well, well I know I'm, but, but I know a lot of people that are going up there that aren't complaining. Aren't right, right. right. I, I am here. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I'm, I, it, there's a lot more benefit than, yeah. than yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but no yeah. number of us are like, oh, this is. And our great. playground is officially done. Yes. I poured yes. concrete this week. I think it's time to say. Yeah, no, I think it's so. Can, thank you we enough. can walk away, sure. right? Yeah. yeah. There's no. And yeah, all we did, we were looking for permission if it looks good. Gotcha. And, and so. you know, the taxpayers put it in our hands. And, yeah. And, and I feel the same way that We've gone. Yeah. Matt does too. Yeah. Um, we tried. We did. Yeah. yeah. And talked well, about many yeah. times. Yeah. But I think look what's happened to Tom as well. Exactly. Well, yeah. there you go. There's that too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's time to pull a plug. Yeah. So, so probably what we need to do is, is say uh, is I probably to get Ron to send a letter and say that due to this whole variety of circumstances, exactly. you know, it's just a, it's smaller the economy, higher climate, it just everything. That we've, we've decided we're. We're going to have to pass. And you, ha you haven't had people knock on the door either way, but you have information just on your own. Exactly. In other yeah. words, if somebody yeah. really wanted to see you get that property because they thought it was a great, you know, and you don't have people coming here objecting to it, but it's here. It's yeah, out, just it's out there. Just here. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, was like, I don't I want to use something that didn't happen here. This exactly. Your own, right. your own feelings yeah. about where we are, that right. the deal would be um, terminated. Or the, it's I mean, we did yeah. we did look at every angle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. not that why, we didn't. Yeah. Right. Why don't you draft up something that we'll look at at the next meeting? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's we don't have to rush. <laughs> well, no. I mean, let let at least yeah. let Howard know. Well, true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Let Howard know. Well, you can see it in the minutes. Maybe it's open. Well, maybe right. which McCall if they wanted to buy it, we'll jump right onto it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just, oh the I'm, seed company, right? No. Yeah. Well, oh. I'm almost thinking the minutes are good enough. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the letter might have more, I'm going to have enough details in the minutes about yeah, why. Would draft a letter, right. But you could have a, just a motion to terminate the person sale agreement process with the quote unquote 22, 25 acres. Oh, and let's that, do that. That, okay, would, yeah. that just means that everybody can stop working on the town so the town attorney can stop. Right. Matt, Matt Reed can stop. We can, I can stop. And then Howard would be in the position of coming back with a Offer you can't refuse potentially, right. or just walking away too. He'll know what they. It's yeah, on his form yeah. at that point. Oh, uh, yeah, let's do that. I don't unless you guys think you'll change in two weeks. That's that's what I was getting. It's at. not. Uh, it's, it's not going to change in my mind. No, no, no. Mine either. Just been there too. Correct. I, I'm in the same. Yeah. If you don't see any, any hope of it changing, then I would. I mean, I wish Brian was here to put his two cents in. Do you know how? I think he's on. Um, I think we're good. Okay. I think we're good. So why don't we need a motion to? Terminate cease, the cease, cease negotiations. Cease negotiations. On the, on the yeah. Okay. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Perfect. 
Okay. So is it is it normal to like with the budget stuff coming up? Um, sorry, I'm backtracking because I I'm, I'm I'm being my liaison in Texas. <laughs> so as do you normally as a liaison? Do we normally meet with your budget heads, like with your department heads, about their budget prior to bringing it? Ideally, not that doesn't always happen, but like for recreation or even the guy in Valley Hall, they'll be coming to you with a budget. Exactly. And chastity fire, fire, should go, fire department. Fire department I'm, should present. But they to usually you. come in right in here. Yeah, so they usually okay. bring it in anyway, don't mm-hmm. they? Yeah. yeah, they all yeah. they all come in, but the the point of the liaison is at least to have them talk to you on the phone for a little bit. Nothing's yeah. happening. We're at two percent. Yeah, that could be very short. Well, there's there's a lot more going, happening there now. You, I, I said this in our last meeting that one truck on that end of town gets purchased. Now they're looking for a truck on this end of town. Yeah, that yeah, was in the capital plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, plan. Yes. But it, yeah, if, if it's just that, that at least yeah. lets us know here yep. that they're not coming with twenty five percent. Yes. Okay. You might want to talk to them about not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or at least knowing why. That's all. It's really quick liaison stuff for fire, recreation, library, even. Uh, it's, just, it's just one of the limited things liaisons do. I know Roland and Highway and I probably should meet at some point because there's so much stuff going on. Highway. Well, we got that truck ordered. We just ain't getting that truck. And Mark said it'd probably be here maybe February. And that was. That, that was, was ordered last year. Yeah, yeah, that was ordered last year. Yeah. I mean, that's not our fault. That's not his fault. I mean, it's just the way it is. So, I mean, that will be a carryover. Does that mean we have a, we're not short a truck, are we? What's that? Are we short? A, no, oh, that's, no, no. That's why we put the $10,600 into that one. That's right. Because it, we it didn't. It runs the risk level up. We didn't want to. Mark didn't there. want to do it, but. It's a good you thing gotta we have, did, apparently. You've got to have the truck, he says, which he's right. Yeah. And, and okay. go ahead and do it. That's. Gotcha. That's why I called everybody. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, storm it's a good event. thing you did. <laughs> storm event. Uh-huh. It's a good thing you did that. Well, it was over 10,000. Anything over 10,000, you need three. Well, no, but I mean fixed it. Because now we're not getting a truck till February. Yeah, we knew that anyway. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, With we crossing knew, fingers. You're... We knew that back in July. Yeah. Oh, got it, got it. We'll be lucky to get it in February. Got it. <clears throat> Okay. You're lucky, yeah. What'd you say? You're lucky to get be it in lucky, February? You'll be lucky to get in February. That's right. You will be. <laughs> okay. You're right. Stormwater event. Having a party on Prospect Street. Yeah, apparently yeah. state officials yeah. and the stormwater division, I guess probably media will be there because of election year. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but it'd be good to have one or two select board members hang out for half an hour maybe or whatever on the on that Monday, next Monday at 430. Not, I'm sorry, two Mondays. Yeah, a couple Mondays from now. Yeah, two Mondays. I have teacher negotiations. But it's I actually just scheduled the requisition me- uh, rec- recreation meeting for Monday. For Monday. <laughs> okay, I'm 24 Susan Long. Nice guy. I'm sorry. Nice guy. It'll be getting dark. It should be yeah, just, I know it'll be dark. It'll just be enough light to see something down there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can try to make it. I don't know what his event is other than pictures and talking about clean water fund money, right. doing good projects in Hyde Park. Right. Willie spent lots of time down there talking. We spent a lot of time on that road. <laughs> What's all the neighbors? Prospect Street. Prospect Street. Prospect Street. Yeah, pretty much done yeah. what I said at the beginning, yeah. wasn't it? So- yeah. <laughs> huh? You got it there. Good. Remember the first meeting we had there? So what she's saying is you're going to attend this meeting? That's right. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll get right. done at 4.30. It might be yeah. a little bit late. Yeah. That's the story yeah, of my so life, I'll Roman. I don't know if you know this, but... <laughs> I mean, I can hustle right over here. You can do that. My hustle's an hour away. <laughs> or hustle. three. Yeah, but you got the company. Okay. What's the well, housing summit? That's so, the second event. Remember the Federal Bank in Boston gave the... Uh, uh, United Way, a whole bunch of money to plan for housing, workforce housing, whether it's zoning regulations, land development needs, uh, uh, community services to support people. It's like a whole program. So this is the second event which brings together all those people that have been talking about what Memorial County needs for housing, really, um, and what select boards could do, like land banking, property, and selling it to a nonprofit, those kind of things where they don't have the land costs because the towns bought that 
land for cheap, whatever. Yeah. So those kind of things. We don't really have those options right now. But if you did have an extra two acre piece and you could put some housing on it, that's what that's one of the solutions that you're talking about. We're working on the zoning side, which is the bylaw grant that we have, which regional planning is doing with the planning commission. We're trying to make sure the zoning regs aren't a uh, preventative housing thing or maybe even providing incentives for people to get more housing units if they do certain things. So that's, we are doing that. We're not doing a lot else, you know, from a regional housing issue. So that eight o'clock to one o'clock, you know, middle of the day, eight to four, it's a long time. Um, the first housing summit is on the WCC Memorial United Way website. Um, I don't think we've been, they came here once asking us to be a partner person. They came to one of your meetings. Yeah. Saying, Do you want to be a partner town with all times? And we said, we'll think about it. Yeah. Nobody, nobody's no. joined, so to speak. But I think they're going to conclude their grant as a three-year grant. I think they're yeah. a year, almost two years through it now. Uh, Planning Commission is next. That's this Thursday at six o'clock. Just an update on three grants that are going. One of them is bylaw uh, modernization, which I just mentioned. Planning grant is the signs and uh, branding, which regional planning is helping with as well. Uh, they want to come up with a logo for North High Park and some signs at the three entryways. Mm. So that hopefully will happen soon. That's just the designs. The design should be done by June, I think. And then construction zone, construction grant after that. And the public sewer is moving forward. That's uh, another regional planning project for us. And they're trying to figure out where decentralized sewer would go in North Hyde Park. And that's a two or $3 million at least kind of project. So uh, Northern borders, a lot of state grants are being put into village centers. So I don't know how, what the percentage of grant support will be or what the interest from North Hyde Park will be because some of those homes are right, right on top of each other or single family homes that ideally would have two or three extra units in there, but you can't do that with a backyard Sure. Tank, <laughs> perforated tank, or whatever they have in the village, or straight pipe to the river. <laughs> so whatever's going on, you have to fix those things. There's no fixes really. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's patches, but there's not a permanent fix. Whereas decentralized sewer would be just like a regular sewer and water system, just for that area of town. A lot of work to do on that. The first one is just identifying the needs, how much area you would need, talking to some landowners on a preliminary basis. And then presenting it to the select board with, hey, this is like, uh, this will be a utility of some sort the town would have to run, paid by the user fees, but still another person that's a town employee running the sewer system. The water district up there has talked about uh, either finding people to take over the water system or having the town run it. That's another town potential future thing. Not in my lifetime, but. Roger's still doing it. There's people that are still doing it, but their list is like two or three. Oh, yeah. And they still have to meet all the state requirements. So I don't know where they're headed. Um, we do not know where they're headed with that. They, they, won't, they won't admit that they need to have a transition plan, but they do need a transition plan because yeah. they only have three or four people that are partly interested in water at all, partly because yeah. the rates are so low. They yeah. came for the original ARPA grant. Haven't heard anything from them since. They have approval. They signed the subrecipient agreement, which was a big step. That was the first one's always the hardest design. Yeah. They signed that, so that's done. And then the I helped them with an RFP for engineering. They selected one person, and that person closed up shop due to labor. So they actually closed a whole engineering firm. Oh, man. <laughs> Greenmont wow. Engineering is no more. Mm -hmm. So then we had to go back to the second list, and they picked uh, Dubois King. Randolph, I think they yeah, are based yeah. out of. So they're going to be helping with the water design on the uh, well house, basically. Oh, so that's it is moving forward, but just you know, I'm I'm a one man shop on these RFPs. I might be able to get a contract to you in a week, and it turns out to be three weeks. It's just it's so slow and frustrating. It slows down every for me. Everything is slowed down. So it's just that's what happened. Why you hadn't heard anything because it was just steps and weeks in between each step. Um, so that's what's going on with all that. Um, I think that was the last thing on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I also have a request for 
Um, my Thanksgiving vacation, of course, is coming up. I've been going down to Florida for family stuff down there. And I was thinking that the with the select board budget schedule that you guys have and my schedule, why don't you use some more ETO time? So I'm still 2, 270 or 80. So I'm trying to keep it below the 300 so I don't lose it anymore. Taking the two weeks of Thanksgiving as ETO vacation time and doing the remote the two weeks before then, which is fine with me and Jennifer. We're all on teams all the time there. So I just need to, you need to mitigate that. Except for the November November 22nd meeting. Will you call in for that one? I'll be, yeah, I'll be in any meeting I'll be at. Oh, okay. Because so I'm like, there's a lot on that budget for that. No, no, no. There was, there was no <laughs> intent. Right no, there was no intention to not oh, have meetings. Oh, gotcha. It's just that I won't okay. be available. It'll be for the, I won't be, uh, I'll try not to be able to public those two weeks of Thanksgiving. Gotcha. The two weeks before will be normal business. Okay. And I'm hoping that everybody on that list does. Sometimes we have trouble getting the numbers from like the rec committee. See if he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> but you have, we had issues with all of the departments just getting used to a better finance system. So Guy and Valley Hall Committee, Rec Committee, we need your person to come on board. We're trying to get the, like each committee to have a treasurer. There isn't a person yet. That's what we're still working on. We, I just barely finally got one that suckered into it. That she doesn't know how much work it's going to be. Don't tell her that. Now it's all public. I know. I <laughs> No, Jennifer, Jennifer is really good at making things easy for people yeah. because she needs it to be on time and she needs to know what okay. might take time for people. So she tries to help with that. She's helping me. She'll pre-code something. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at it rather than trying to pull up the chart of accounts. And because she, she knows it and she puts it down and I just have to initial it. And I think yeah. she's trying to do that with Dale at Guy and Valley Hall Committee. Okay. And okay. she's trying to do That's it great. with Heather, maybe. I forget the name of the person. That might do it for you guys. Kelsey's going to be the person to do it. Kelsey. Right now Michelle's doing all of it. So whatever whatever that, and she's working really close with Jim Noyes, trying yeah, to get yeah. the library figured out and trying to get that account into the Nemeric system. I think we're, we're in the same boat. So whatever, have that things right, whatever the committees need is what I've told Jennifer she has to get to at some point. And that usually means the committee having one person designated and have a relatively simple process. Yeah. So not to not to put more burden on there, but we can't talk to two or three or four different people, and and that just doesn't work. So if we have one person designated for rec, and we have one person now Dale designated for guy out the health community, we have one person for the library community circle. We have yeah. you know Jim basically on finance right now for the library. It just works really well. Yeah. Well, this should, would be good too because like we dealt with Allie so much in the past, like. It's a totally different process now from Allie to Jennifer. So that's, that's, there is, yeah. Yeah. Some of our invoices weren't getting paid for a year. Well, Jennifer's schedule for your purposes is when she goes to that quarterly meeting that you asked for with a big report, mm -hmm. she really personally wants all that stuff to be accurate. Yeah. Of course. She really, I mean, I see that in her way she works and way she wants to get stuff to you. It's got the, the way she's, yeah, the way yeah. she's not happy, so to speak, when things are not quite clear mm -hmm. and she wants to get to the answer. Yes. Perfect for finance. Absolutely. Yeah. And that helps you guys know that when you get a report, whether it's the quarter report, monthly it's report, spot on, or posted on the website, and you ask how much is in the reserve. You'll you know, get an you answer. Get an answer. Get an answer. answer. Yeah. So it really is correct. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we're trying to set the system more than the person. So the systems that we're setting up and the way that things are being set up are, are we purposely made it being a thoughtful process for Jennifer as a new person, but with the idea that it's set up for any person. Exactly. So when somebody comes in, they know where to look, what the procedure is, where the calendar is, all that stuff. And that really hadn't quite been done for either Deborah or Allison in the past, which made some disjointed reporting basically yeah so really positive on That's finance on uh, that regard so you're gone november oh yeah there's no pretty much there okay. yeah I'll, well I, no, gone but not gone. yeah i still need to work with everybody because it's a, almost a daily thing during the budget season right. and i'm trying to bring jennifer along so first budget season she told me i'm a little new to this budget process stuff i said i'm going to be doing the budget process but i'll send her FYI, this is what we do with community agencies. FYI, this is what we do with capital planning. Okay. FYI, this is what we do with 
uh, salary projections with the U.S. Department of Labor projections for CPI. And so she's getting that Perfect. background. Okay. Um, and that all is working well. Cool. It's bring two. It's bring two. You have a drink. You, you wouldn't want one of those in there. I had such bad heartburn this whole meeting that I didn't dare drink it. Oh. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Are we set? I just wanted to ask oh. Ron a quick question. When when there's a place being built in the town. And a house, you mean? A house. Or a whatever. business or whatever. Yeah, anything. Yeah. Landowners, other landowners are surrounded by are supposed to be notified. If there's a public hearing. If there's a public hearing, everybody gets a letter in the mail or email that says, hey, your neighbor is doing something to come to this hearing on November 3rd. If there is a, um, a waiver request, setback waiver, which is not a public hearing. So if somebody wants to build a shed 10 feet to a property line where, 20, I just got that. where 25 is required. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need one for that. That's a letter to all the neighbors. Yeah, I got a letter. That's a set. That's called a setback waiver. Every other permit, pretty much, is, this is a subdivision type thing. It's just a posting. Right? They get a posting, and the, and that's it. There's a very limited notice on most permits. About 80 eighty percent of the permits only get a poster that's supposed to go up on the property, and we don't check that. We we trust that the landowner follows the instructions that I give them to post it within public view. It's a little P permit. I don't know if you've seen them. On White, with the red, oh, sure. White with the red P. Yeah, sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, but they're supposed to be posted a public way. So people driving by can see. Not on private roads down the back where you're not supposed to be the public. So if you get something going on near you and you don't see a P permit, you call the office <clears throat> or the village office <coughs> and say, hey, what's this? I didn't get noticed, so it must be a must be an administrative permit. And you can still find out what it's for. <clears throat> okay. Now, how much can we get out of our pit a year? Subtract out of our pit a year. Ten thousand. Gravel and sand. Ten thousand. Right. Yeah. We have a ten thousand year end export. I don't know. I can't remember. We do, we do ten. We do ten on, on contract with. with but you do ten ten thousand yards in gravel every three years. Yeah, that's the but that's not that's the that, that stays in the pit. You don't have to count that until it comes out. Yeah, the removal is controlled <coughs> at 250. The rate of removal is uh, controlled the extraction at rate. Yeah, that's a maximum every year at 10,000. I think water, you know, sand and gravel. I think there's 7,000 in the sand pit, or I forgot. Mark told me once, I can't remember how much is in that sand pit. Mark has that information. Yeah, he reports it every year. We have to report it to the USGS. It's kind of a weird thing, but they ask us to report every year what's what we remove from our gravel pit. So we have records back to 1980 at the federal level because it's a federal permit, federal reporting requirement, not a federal permit, but a state permit. And Act 250 caps it. So a while ago, back, I asked Mark if he wanted to change that to an Act 250 amendment, and he. he so he said to Mark. We're good, he said. That um, this winter, when them guys take that sand out up there, yeah, I want that I'd like that documented and see how many loads and see how many yards we use of that sand over the winter. Yeah, we have. Well, I don't know how much we use. I think Mark has that. How many loads he puts up? No, I don't because no. <laughs> I've talked to him. You've talked to him. I don't know how much he puts up because we have to report that to the USGS. I can pull the, I can pull a few last reports to show what we actually pull out of it. He does keep track of that. How much he used for per storm? I don't know if he keeps all that track. That was. I don't, I don't know. He's tried to reduce it, obviously, over over years through management of his computer systems and all that stuff. So he's tried to reduce reduce sand and salt over the years, which has helped us. The, yeah, the huge increase in winter salt this year. Seven dollars a ton over last year, he said, I think. Yeah, it's ninety one compared to sixty, seventy, seventy two. And the fuel's going up again. Of course fuel, it is. Fuel yeah. will be up and down. Yeah. Yeah, it's ninety one dollars a ton this year, which is right twenty percent more than last year, which is covered by our budget because we are wait we're we're waiting 
remark savings. So each year he's had savings over the last two or three years of 20,000 plus or minus. Yeah, remember you, we, we bought a new trailer. We you used a trailer, trailer, trailer thing, trailer, not trailer, yeah, yeah, trailer, 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 so trailer. We ate that up in no time. So for FY24, we're back to square now. Even though he saved a, a lot of tonnage with his new computers and all that yeah. stuff, the inflation has caught up with it again. So now yeah. we're going to have to look at going back over the 85,000, back up to where we were headed before, which we had 95 in the budget at one time. Yeah. So I'm guessing this year we're going to go back to the 90,000 for 24, which should be good this year, even with the increase. Because but we're, 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 we're spending a lot of money up there to that pit by by moving that topsoil. I know, we've, talk, we've talked about moving the garage up there a couple times, and Mark has an argument of- He don't want it up there. Sending light trucks up Garfield Road in a snowstorm. Right, you know, he, he don't like some, it. He some don't organizational like it. concern about the location. <clears throat> but that is, a, a, I know Cambridge hauls from Cambridge to Johnson, so it's a lot shorter trip than that, but it's still- Cambridge long. hauls from where? See, Cambridge is hauling from the- Natives. The natives up to Cambridge. Not Cambridge, Colchester, sorry. They don't have their own source there. I see them, I pass them on Route 15 off all Colchester to Johnson. And Essex, too. I feel like I see a lot of Essex trips. So we have a pretty short trip compared to some other towns, but it'd be ideal if it was at the garage. That would be ideal. But I, don't, I haven't pushed Mark too hard to find out what more reason he has other than sending empty trucks up to, into Garfield. First load out. Oh, to load. To I'm load like, up without the garage. There. Right but the first load, if he could get the truck up there empty, then the trucks would be sanded on the way out. So it would be a one time trip to open the road up, I guess, in the morning. Unless we move the garage. Oh. Right. And then the trucks are parked there, so they'd be loaded. The trucks should be loaded at the garage at night anyway mm -hmm. for the first trip up. But the road can be maintained first. And mm -hmm. that's probably what he was thinking. I don't know. That's an operational thing we haven't gone into much. I just know he doesn't like it, but we've talked about it every three or four years. Board members bring it up like clockwork. So it's, I, somehow we should resolve that from a full discussion. I'd be, I'd be into that just to understand it better. Have Mark come in and tell us why we shouldn't get off Main Street. Well, what he's, what he's saying, what he's saying is he don't want to send trucks up to Garfield because once you leave the garage up there, if the garage was up there, you'd be sanded. And then you'd run out of sand, or you'd go back to get sand, the truck would be empty going up that hill. That's kind of what he's saying. If you had the garage up there, you'd load in the morning. But if you leave the area up there, you'd be sanding anyway. Yeah. And, and you'd be maybe 40 minutes to 45 minutes but if you get a nice storm, in, in five minutes, that whole freaking road can be frozen again. You know? So but, you really have to think about that, too. Uh, you you, you don't, usually have the chains on. They don't have to go up. They don't have to go up Garfield Road. They don't have to go up the dump road. No, they can go up okay. St. Marie, by St. Marie's and up through Garfield. Yeah, yeah. but Jesus, that's a long ways. Not, 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 well, not for Ryan because he plows that end. But, but you know, then, then, then again, you're in my car. How many oh, people true. Are then again, well, this, we anything in Morsel. Everything is everything's on this side. That's true. This is more central to the Hyde Park area. Yes. It'd be great if we could get on Battle Road, though, but we can't. We, we tried that just before they put the houses in on. Oh, yeah. Was like, mm -hmm. Couldn't pull it up. But um, have you, not to get off the subject, though, do you want to explore that like more? Formally, like have Mark in and try to talk about a new, the new garage up there is still a $1.5 million project type thing or more. But that, I guess that that's building, up to the rest of the board members. That building over here would have be some, interesting to explore options. This building would have, right? I mean, the existing garage would have some value to somebody if we were to spin that off and sell it to fund the new place. Could the, the village, village. Uh, like folks would probably love it if we were to come here. To come there, yeah. Those are that's exactly the, the project planning I was talking about the last meeting. I know. That's Go exactly home, think right. about your capital projects exactly. you want to put into. Because all those things are big projects that take time to think about, first of all, with all your different peoples. Yeah. I can run the cost and also run the cost for Eric to get it down there. You sure you got time? Yeah. He does it all day long, right? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just saying that. You know, that's oh, it'd be worth researching. I bet that's, I bet that's a three fifty. I bet that's a three dollar haul. 
That's it? We, we did a, Dave cool. Gagne and I did a study, and the moving was 15,000, I think. And what do you figure, 7,000? But we're all summer long the moving three sand. Or four, the three or four right. weeks that it took to move all that sand. Right. You're saying 15,000, that was what, five years ago? Could be doing yeah. So if fuel prices is up, I'm not yeah. very hard, I'm not, see that? Chastity, <laughs> Chas, Chas, you see that? What? He just said it was $2, I said it was three. And, then, and fuel prices up about $1.50. I'm guessing I'm not far off. Oh, I guess you're not. See, I, I'm, not, I'm not a nurse, didn't but I do do that. <laughs> I just assumed it would be more. That's why. No, but there, I mean, love it. Love those discussions because yeah. we have day to day stuff. And the board and the planning commission really need, and that's what I would love to at some point get on your agenda, other than 75% of the stuff you did tonight, is spending that two hours right. on that kind of stuff. Because otherwise, all we end up doing is we're just putting up buyers and we're just responding to complaints and dealing with. Stuff that doesn't matter. Well, that's what that second meeting was going to be a month, yeah, and I feel like we just theory. got more shit. That's right. <laughs> it's true because we keep getting more stuff. Want to be business? I don't know. Planning. That's partly me, partly Brian, but yeah. that's all right. We'll get through it. Oh yeah. I'm just trying. So if it happens at the end of the meeting every time, that'd be great. <laughs> right. Because that's and great. That's what, at, at twenty thousand, at twenty thousand dollars per year, it would take you. 50, 65 years to pay off a garage to be up there and your pit's exhausted in 30. To get the money back from moving it up there? Yeah. So, so you just put the kibosh to where I thought of. I just, I just told you it's not worth it. It's not fiscally responsible. So you have an added cost to this location and that's the most cost effective way. But right? what we really Versus a new garage. Right. The new garage is what throws it off. The but, benefit is we don't pay anything for our own sand. I mean, some, some of these yeah. towns are paying fourteen dollars a yard. And the, the, other benefit, thing. the other benefit is that FEMA is paying us ninety-seven point five percent for all the gravel we use during the yes. Storm so we get because we have our policies in place and we yeah. have people to administer. So it all works. I mean, it does work. Together. So how, how do we put a number on our, what what price per yard is, that is? Uh, we use. Uh, no, or should we buy? <laughs> no, we 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 build. See, this is going back to 2019. I think we built FEMA 12. Okay. And the, and the, and the market price was higher, you know, 17 yeah. something. I forget what it was. But. So can I throw something else at you? Because you think it's not fiscally. Don't don't throw it too hard. Okay. <laughs> You so, but know. if we don't have to haul the sand mm -hmm. all summer long, then those workers have time to do other projects right, versus well, that's, road sand. That's what I said to Mark back yeah, some when we going. talked about it. If you remember, the yeah. board talked Trailers. about it. Yeah. And you guys said, yeah, if he needs a couple trucks, hire a couple trucks. It would be cheaper to put that sand up and it would be better to hire a couple tandems and there are three tandems, and get that stuff down here in, in 10 days. Oh, okay. And then you could go on with your new excavator. Okay. And you could go on with your ditching and get stuff done. That's right. We, we could also do a hybrid. You know, let's say March, April, May, you know, whatever, or, you know, March and April, you're not negative 40 degrees. So some of them, they could just go up to the pit and get in the spring you know there's not there's not True. it's not necessary it's not necessary for them to have it. a massive amount there you know maybe they pull in we could start talking about having five thousand sixty percent of that right and then haul down during march they're not they're not down on the road using the extra in march they're not grading no you know so they're they're low on uh, they, they're basically down. plowing yeah. and there's no reason i mean short of our roads Taking the abuse, but at the same time, but it's all blacktop. That's right. Oh, and they could they could go it's get not, it. They could go get it from there. You know, it's not like you need to. It's right. not, you're not freezing. The the loader could sit there and then get loaded that the last month. We could save ourselves five or six grand that way, mm -hmm. potentially. Right. Easy. Easy. Yeah. yeah. You know. And they have the summer months, so we're talking you know a lot less time. Right, so you gain it on that side. I mean, too. you know, he just got done saw hauling sand here last week. Right. Okay. He's, he's, he has these weeks where he's busy on that and then he gets onto another project sure. and he comes back. 
I, they're also, I think, Eden, Eden did some calling for us. Too, yeah, right? so they owed us a bunch of time. There's, there's a schedule that's dependent on Eden for a couple of weeks when they help us out. But I think and getting that excavator back on the roads is is the goal. I think. Yeah. You know, so the more well, that we're gonna can, we're gonna find that out. No, but the more that you can, the more that you can put the excavator out there, or the backhoe, whatever's needed for right. road work, the the better. There's no really benefit to moving sand. There's not a lot of benefit to having Mark watch other contractors and not do road work. You know, those are the things that we were trying to identify. Right. And if it, if it needs twenty thousand dollars in the budget for outside contractor help to push the sand faster, then you should put it in there because it's going to benefit you on the road work. That's where that's that's where we got to go. Yeah, having a couple big trailers that do 20 yards. You may need a couple back uh, bucket loaders to move it around quicker. You know, just, just try so, actually. Just, 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 so, just so I understand it. Are we getting paid for excavator to be running? Like, are those like grant projects? No. For what? No. no. So, no. Not a lot. Of, not a lot of those. No. There's some that will be. Yeah. You're talking about excavator work? Yeah, yeah, no, that's not so, budget so. It's normal, normal. Oh, unless you know, it's, road it's work. yeah, normal work, road work. Right? Yeah. So it's prevent I, maintenance. Maintenance. I get that there Hopefully. was a commitment to say that we we're going to buy an excavator in a certain amount of hours, but it doesn't. Does it? Is it really making sense that we're going to spend more money to have our sand hauled down here so that we're working the excavator to do more maintenance? Well, you know, but we wouldn't. We, we wouldn't haul. Our, yeah, and hire our trucks to haul our sand. We'd hire the trucks to work with our trucks. You know, get everybody, get the three guys in their trucks mm -hmm. and get a couple extra tandems and have the pile up there and have a loader band. I mean, you can move a lot of sand down here. You know, you're saying make it, make it, make it a, make it a production. Make you know, and, and instead of, instead right, of. Consolidate the effort. Instead yeah. of all summer, you could do it in, in, in four, 10 hour days. Right. Easy. Exactly. I wouldn't even take. It wouldn't take probably a week and a half, I mean, you know, four, five, six days. You'd have a lot of sand. Then you get Ricky in there for a couple of days because you see we sand roads for him, and he does. I think he does three days for us. So I really got to think about that. Yeah. Because we can be doing other things. Yeah, it just gets more of our regular road work done. Get caught up he's supposed to be, things. I think he's supposed to start deburming because there is some roads out there that needs to de deburn. So he's going to start that next week, I think. It's today. Today's only Tuesday. Huh? Today's 11th. Tuesday. It's the 11th. 11th. Yeah, he's going to start next week, I think. You know, and then you got, um, you got cold weather coming in. You got to get ready for winter. <laughs> I'm in denial. Well, it's going to be 70 tomorrow. <laughs> when, you're, when you're in their line of work, I know, no, there's I know. no denial. I know. Want to come to Keene tomorrow? Keene? Yeah. Did you guys adjourn? I can't remember. No, we didn't, but we should. Yeah, meeting adjourned. I vote.